Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. HP, Magic Punk Chapter 1, Chapter 1, Orion. In an opening somewhere near a forest, a young boy of a mere ten years was sitting beside a fire camp. This boy's name was Orion. He was a boy with a small frame and not much muscle. The poor boy was always has been physically weak. Or at least that used to be the case. Hey Red, are you excited about the meet today? It's been a long time since I caught a rabbit. Orion asked with a wide smile on his face. He looked at the brown dog, sitting beside him, panting like dogs usually do. After hearing Orion's words, as the dog understood him, he barked happily. Me too boy. Need to eat a lot if we wanna grow stronger, remember that. Orion said and turned back to the food he was cooking. It's been a long time since Orion has come to this world. Yes, Orion is not from this time, or maybe not from this world, entirely. Before this, he was a normal orphan in the 21st century. As long as he remember he was an orphan, no matter which time he was talking about. Many years ago he had an accident. Courtesy of our all-time favorite drug gun. The de facto reason for people dying and getting reincarnated into another world and he ended up coming to this world. Merging with this child's body. Okay, this is almost done. Red you go and play. I will practice a little more, said Orion and got up, walked a little further from the campfire and sat down cross-legged. Taking an Indian sitting posture he was ready to enter into meditation state, but stopped. And remember, if you touch the pot, then I will make you eat those green herbs for the next month, Orion said and smiled. Woof came the reply from his fairy friend and Ryan understood that the message had been sent across clearly. Orion then took a deep breath and with a little reluctance, finally started meditation. Soon, the air around him started to change. It was hard to notice but slowly the air was condensing around Orion. The heat in his body started to rise, and so his breathing started to become heavy. This was a special exercise which he discovered through a pendant he always had in his possession. Minus five years ago. Orion found himself stuck into a five-year-old boy's body. It was 1985, and he was somewhere in Britain. Thank goodness I know English. He could not help but mutter to himself. But that was not the problem. The real problem was the people who were leaving. The orphanage was run by Ems and Mrs. Lawrence. Not the best kind of people out there. Constant beating, abuse and much more. Maybe a child can take all of this but Orion was 16 years old when he died big enough that he knows when it's the right time to stand up and demand his rights. Well, rights were not very clear at this time in Britain's history. He took the suffering as long as he could but after just three months he had enough. The last straw was to the night when Mrs. Lawrence kicked him out of the orphanage because he dared to talk back. Poor Orion had to spend his entire night out. It was chilly but not very dangerous. Dear God, whenever I say to you that there is nothing worse can happen than this, Please don't take that as a challenge, Orion said. He was looking up at the beautiful moon in front of him. But then suddenly he felt a vibration around his neck. He then took out an equally beautiful looking pendant from around his neck. That pendant had a hexagonal design with a precious looking blue gem in the middle. Orion has tried to open it but never could. This was the only thing, he had from his childhood. Why are you shinning all of a sudden, is my system about to activate? Finally, he could not help but wonder. This was the first time that this had happened to the pendant. He then noticed something which made him double check what he was looking at. He saw, writing appearing on the pendant. Narrowing his eyes he put the pendant right in front of the moonlight to read what is written there. Surprisingly, the writing intensified under the moonlight. What is this, I have never seen this language before, Orion could not help but mutter. The writing almost looked like some ancient and long forgotten script. But then he noticed the writing started to shine. He was becoming more interested in the stone now. Like it's coming to life, communicating with him. Then something which Ryan himself could not describe correctly happened. 
there was some sort of ethereal energy shot out from the pendant and entered his body. The next moment, he found himself waking up, the next morning in the exact place we were sitting before. Current time, 1991. Ha, HFFF, strong breathing came from Orion. He entered into meditation for only ten minutes and this took everything, out of him. Back then, when that energy entered into me, I learned about a special meditation technique. He had wondered this for a long time. The technique itself is very demanding, and besides the technique slowly making his body stronger, he doesn't know anything about it. Orion looked at his shaking hands. This thing takes away all of my stamina and left me hungry as FCK. But at least I am seeing a little development, Orion said with a little smile. At first, it was fairly hard to perform this technique, like, Tanjiro had a problem mastering sun breathing. But as he practiced more, Orion started to perform the technique for a longer time. It still takes extreme willpower and mental fortitude, but, at least he is seeing improvement. His once weak body is now strong enough to hunt down deer and rabbits. His senses, reaction time and mental capacity are better than any ten-year-old has the right to be. But above all, there is a mysterious power inside of him now, something, he has tried to master all this time but could not bring out. As if, something has clogged the energy from coming out. He secretly suspects that it's the force from Star Wars. So, after knowing that he has this kind of power and technique, he runs away from the orphanage, refusing to be a punching bag for both Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence any longer. And since then he has been wandering around and practicing his meditation technique. Red, come on boy, the meal is ready, Orion shouted. Already salivating over the cooked rabbit meat. He has been living in this forest for the last two years now. His past life experience came very handy, and even though he could not get any work, thanks to his age, he decided to hunt for himself and spend his time in the forest. Red, where are you, he shouted again. But again no reply came. Getting a little worried about his only friend. He took his knife and a fire touch to look after Red. Red. Dot. Red, where are you? Dot. But no reply came. I might really put some green leaves on his diet after this, Orion joked to himself and kept looking around. Swoosh. He then heard a sound and turned around. Orion quickly pushes his fire touch upwards to see what's there. It was not exactly night but the remaining sunlight was not enough to navigate in this deep forest. For some reason, Orion was having a bad feeling about this. Who's there? Orion asked. No reply again. Could it be a snake? I found a few of them around, Orion thought and relaxed his tense nerves a little. Swoosh. Again the sound came but this was from behind him. Turning around, he saw nothing again. Even his pendant started to shake. Orion with his black long hair and almost sparkling blue eyes was now getting really tense. Okay, this shit is no longer PG-13, Orion muttered. Red. Where the FCK are you, Orion should and the next moment. Woff. Dot. A sound came and instantly Orion jumped from his place, startled by the sudden bark, pushing his fire touch towards the sound and taking out his knife. But the next second he signed in relief. Shit Red, you almost gave me a heart attack, Orion said with an annoyed look. Yup, it's final now, you say are not getting meat for a long time, he thought and a little satisfied smile came to him, comforting his tense nerves. He was about to go near his friend and give him a hard pat for the scare but then in front of his eyes, something tackled Red. His eyes widened to the extreme and once again his entire body tense up. What? Comma who are you? Orion shouted but no reply came. But there were sounds animalistic sounds. And his friend's howlings. Hey, you leave Red alone, Orion shouted and rushed up. He knew, at least by the shadow that it was a human and not an animal. Orion rushed up and brought his fire touch closer to the figure who was tackling Red. I said, leave him alone, Orion shouted and hit the figure with the fire touch. The humanoid figure then screams, but then backhanded Orion. Almost sending him flying towards a tree. It was a heavy blow, Orion was not expecting this much physical power from one simple backhand swing from this man. Urgh! Orion groaned in pain, as blood was already in his mouth. That definitely some broken rips there, he could not help but curse. That thing can't be a human, Orion was already out of breath, thanks to his practice of the mysterious training. Then he suddenly thought about that power. Man, if there is the right time for a random power-up, then this is most definitely that time. Come on, whatever system I got, help me out here a little bit, 
Orion said and concentrated, trying to gather power in his body. Well, he was already tired out because of his earlier practice, and now this. The only thing he got was more pain. He could also hear Red's groaning in pain. FCK, hurry up. Orion became anxious after this. Red is very important to him. Not only Red is his only friend but he is also his partner. He's not gonna let anything happen to Red. He gathered as much as power he could and then rushed back to the figure. The only effect right now that strange technique had on him was to improve his physical power. But it was enough to forget about his pain for a little while and save Red. Only Red was on his mind right now. The man, thanks to the fire touch, finally came under a little light for Orion to see his face. Orion who was rushing towards the man immediately stopped. What the, comma Orion could not help but say, already losing his focus. He saw a horribly pale face with red eyes and big fangs on that man's face. Vampire. Dot. Chapter 2, Chapter 2, Rebirth. Vampire. Orion mutters unconsciously after seeing the face of the man. Shit, why a vampire is here? What is this world, Twilight? Thousands of speculations started forming in Orion's mind. But then something even more bizarre thing happened. That so-called vampire took out a small stick. That looked pretty familiar to Orion. Orion narrowed his eyes and noticed something. This, this is. He suddenly mutters in recognition but before he can even say the words. Crucio. The man said. And then there was just pain. Heart-wrenching pain. Ah, uh, fay uh. Only screams came out of his mouth. FCK. Orion although in utter pain, but still, he was able to retain his sanity. Thanks to his five years of training with that utterly infuriating technique. Both, his mental fortitude and willpower were off the charts. He was one of those willful people to begin with. So nah, he isn't gonna take this while lying down. Need to concentrate, activate the technique, Orion thought. At least that can save me from his horrible pain, Orion could not help but ponder. You filthy human, came the harsh voice. He sounded angry and arrogant. And this one line was enough for Orion to believe that the other person is not human. But Orion hardly cares about that. That vampire actually talked much more but pain by now already made Orion numb to almost everything. Woof. Red seeing his owner in danger, bucked and jumped towards the vampire. Red was a natural predator and staying with Orion who usually took him to hunt, has done him much favor in terms of stealth. And even after being endured by the vampire the poor dog still was ready to save his friend. Red was undetected until he was extremely close to the vampire and then he attacked, making the vampire lose his focus and even his balance. You damn mud, Dot shouted the man with a loud voice. With a flick of his wand, he sends Red flying back. Orion who was on the verge of losing consciousness saw the tip of the wand glowing with green light. His eyes almost pop out of his sockets. FCK, Red, get out of there. Quick, comma he shouted but Red was a dog. He can't directly understand what Orion means. Only those things which Orion has taught him could he do. Avada Kedavara. The green light shot and hit red, spot on. It was almost as if the time had stopped for Orion. Unconsciously he has started practicing his mysterious training again. After five years, this awesome and yet uncomfortable technique has become an instinctive reaction for him to calm himself down. This sounds very masochistic, considering just how much pain it causes him but it's always worked for him. But right now, it is not working. Orion knew what that spell was. One of the most dangerous spells in the Harry Potter universe. Then the man turns towards Orion. What, so you are not a squib? The vampire asked. Unknown to Orion, the vampire senses magic gather around Orion. Clearly, the technique was doing something. He saw Orion's magic flaring and now his eyes were different, plus the heat around him. He looked baffled, he clearly did notice that Orion didn't have magic and thought that he was a mole. He was here hunting for food after finally getting back his freedom, he was weak right now and need to nourish his body fast. He planned to take both the dog and the boy but this makes things difficult. Finally deciding to not waste any more time and not to give the boy in front of him any chance to use his magic, the man turned his wand towards Orion. Whoever you are, just die. The vampire said. Orion on the other hand by now, already had blood flowing from his nose. This was because of using his strange magic gathering technique, it hurts him after using it too much. His eyes were bloodshot and the wind around him was rotating as he was the center point. His body was shaking, as if his skin was on fire, there was smoke coming out of his body. 
Avara Kadavara. The vampire did not waste any time and shot another killing curse. Orion on the other hand was not even paying much attention to the vampire anymore. He was in too much shock at Red's death. He was just unconsciously gathering mana from somewhere. But in fact, the power came from his own soul. That's why he was taking this much damage. Orion however, only kept looking at the dead body of Red. His only friend. But something extraordinary happened just then. He notices that he has raised his one hand up. This action he did unconsciously. His body moved on its own and was already bloodied by the overloading of mana. He noticed a green light hovering right in front of his trembling hand. Only inches apart from hitting him. Power was oozing out of him. This, this is not possible. No one can't stop the killing curse. The man was baffled at this. Orion then looked at the vampire and intense anger came to him. Like a volcano was about to erupt on him. For some reason, Orion could also hear the main track of cyberpunk right now. Chipping in. Never backing down. He was pretty sure that he was hallucinating but f ck it. I'm f king gonna kill you. He then greeted his teeth and sent back the killing curse back with a push. The vampire's eyes were widened to the extreme. He hurriedly dodged the upcoming lethal spell which that brat sent back at him like a f king quidditch ball. But being a vampire has its perks. He was fast enough to dodge the attack. Orion knew that this power which he was feeling was temporary and it was not long before he fell rock death from all the injuries. Decided that, if he was going to hell, then he gonna take this Fka with him, he roared. Another killing curse came towards him within this time. Orion with his aching body gives the last bit of his power to his legs and rushes forward, dodging the killing curse. His body was almost like an afterimage, vanishing from his place. Shit, it hurts like hell, Orion groaned. But he was already near the vampire. Something that neither he nor the vampire understood, how that happened. What the FCK is that speed, Orion could not help but wonder. I'm like a Jedi, Orion thought with a little excitement. Now he just wanted to beat this guy up. He did not waste this one chance he got. He with all his power grabs on the vampire. Not sure why, but something was telling him that this was the right thing to do. And sure enough, suddenly the man caught on fire. The same was the case with the Orion. But it was not just the fire, Orion could sense something. Like the energy entering inside him. As if he is drawing that vampire's power, inside him. Ah, so I can use this technique like this too. Good that I know before dying, Orion thought with a painful chuckle. He saw the entire place, for some reason lit up with fire. Everything was burning. Never backing down, not backing down. No matter who put this song on. I got to say, that man has some great timing, Orion thought. He then heard something which almost made him not regret his upcoming death. He heard the vampire screaming in pain. Ah, music to my ears. Let not meet in hell again, shall we, Orion said. And then a huge blast followed. Everything was blasted to kingdom come. The last thing Orion saw was a bird. A very bright red bird. Red, dot Orion slowly said. Then he closed his eyes darkness consuming himself. It was like he felt in a coma, he had no sense of time. Ready for death but then suddenly someone moved him. He just wanted to die in peace. Why can't he just get a peaceful death? Is the vampire not dead yet? Why my life is like this, killed by a truck, then killed by a vampire in another world? What's wrong with my life, man? He wonders. Someone shook him again, bringing him out of his musing. He finally opens his eyes to notice a lot more light than what he remembers. This got to be the daytime right? But I remember it being the night, what's going on? Am I in heaven already? With that, a little smile appears on Orion's face and then closes his eyes again. Someone again shook him. His eyebrows twitched. Can't a man die peacefully anymore? He can't help but complain to himself. He groggily opened his eyes, not noticing that the pain was not there anymore. He saw a man with white clothes, white hair and a beard around in front of him. Jesus, he could not help but mutter to himself. Wake up Samurai. You have a letter to read. Chapter 3, Chapter 3, A Letter to Read. Orion took his time before finally waking up. He never expected to wake up after what happened the next day, anyway. So it was a really good surprise when he did. So, when he slowly opens his eyes and rubs them to focus his blurry vision, he notices that it already is daytime. It slowly made himself sit, but he noticed that there was not much pain in his body anymore. 
The next thing he did was to immediately look all around his body and check for injuries. Nothing. What is going on? I am sure that I was extremely hurt. There was hardly any way that I could have survived what happened, let alone sit here, scratch free? Orion could not help but wonder. But he noticed that his entire body had been weakened. He no longer had those muscles anymore. He lacks the immense physical power which he gains after practicing his special technique for five years. He closed his eyes, many things were going through his mind right now but he needed to first understand his current situation. Oh, you finally woke up, suddenly Orion heard this and turned his head towards the sound, a little startled. The moment he saw the person in front of him, his eyes widened. Gandalf, Orion almost shouted in surprise. Ha ha, no no my young friend, I am not Gandalf, but if you want to call me that then be my guest, said the Ian McKellen stunt double. I mean, if I did not know better then, I would have considered him Ian McKellen himself. That was Orion's thoughts right now. Okay okay. What is going on here? Can you explain me, sir? Orion asked. The Gandalf lookalike took out his pipe and puffed on it. Even acting like Gandalf from the Lord of the Rings movie. Well, Orion, I can call you that, right? He asked. Orion, after hearing this, just nodded his head. Well, after you took care of that vampire, you were extremely weakened and almost on the doorstep of death, he said. He took some time and then continued. But you were lucky, that guy there safe you, he said. Orion naturally followed where the Gandalf lookalike was pointing. He saw, just a little further to him, was a big red bird there. Orion instantly knew after seeing the bird, what kind of bird that exactly was. A phoenix Orion said in surprise. So I am not dreaming, I am in the Harry Potter world, Orion mutters to himself. He actually saw a red bird before passing out. Now he believes that it was not a dream. But then he also saw that Jesus Kino too. But he noticed the old man in front of him and something inside him just clicked. That would be correct? You are in the Harry Potter world, but I would advise not to only consider this that world of drama and books which you know, is much bigger and different than you could ever imagine, came the reply to what he muttered. You, you know about the Harry Potter world? Orion could not help but ask in surprise. Now getting more and more confused at what exactly going on here. No, not exactly. I learned about the Harry Potter series from your mind, said Gandalf in front of him. My mind? Orion asked in confusion. He does know many things about this world, like Phoenix tears can heal and thus he did not ask how that Phoenix healed him. And naturally, he also knows about Legil Immensi. Did you, read my mind? Orion asks already speculating what kind of consequence this will bring to the world of Harry Potter. Don't worry my friend, I did not read your mind. In fact, I do not exist in the first place, said the Gandalf look-alike. Orion was again confused but his confusion was gone when the old man in front of him, tried to touch a tree trunk, but his hand passed right through it. You are a ghost, Orion obviously connected the dot and knowing that the Harry Potter world has ghosts, he thought that the person in front of him was one. In fact, it was only right now that he noticed the little faint ghostly aura around the old man. Well in a way, you can say that, what I really am, is a memory. A magical memory, I created when I was alive to guide my successor when I meet him, said the man. That's strange, even for the magical world, Orion could not help but say to himself. Ha ha, don't worry too much, I promise that you will experience many more strange things in this world, besides this old man, said the old man with a smile. So, I can't even think anything without him knowing, Orion thought and immediately the old man smiled. In irritation, Orion's eyebrows were twitching. So. You are not real, is that it? Orion asked. He only got a little nod. What is your name then? Although you know me, but I know nothing about you, Orion said. After hearing this, the old man smiled and said. I am Merlin, I am sure that you are aware of who I am, said the now self-identified Merlin. Orion's eyes widen. Like the legendary wizard, Merlin? Orion asked with amazement. Yes my friends, the very same, replied Merlin with a knowing smile. Orion was not sure what to think anymore. He got reincarnated, then he found that this world is the wizarding world of Harry Potter and now he realized that the person in front of him is none other than the legendary wizard, Merlin. What is he supposed to think about? He is not sure. Could it be that he is my special cheat that the world gave me, Orion wondered. No, I assure you that my being here has nothing to do with your world's famous fanfic ideas. I am not a system and I surely have not come here because of any cheat, said Merlin with a roll of his eyes. 
Orion at this, almost rolled his own eyes. He doesn't like, his mind being read by others like this. But if Merlin is not here because of some reincarnation system or cheat, then why he is here? And do I don't get any special system or power? Orion wondered. Merlin too could hear what Orion was thinking and could not help but sigh internally. It's not like he doing it on purpose but there is no way for him to stop this phenomenon. His soul right now is connected with Orion. On another note, he was a little amused at what Orion was thinking. The fact that Orion who could not do magic before and was a squib, and now suddenly has magical power. If this is not a cheat then he is not sure what is. Actually, you have one of those cheat which you are talking about, the technique you have. It's nothing less than a cheat, believe me, Merlin said. Really? Orion was a little taken aback. Yes, although I am not exactly sure just how effective this technique is but it can make a squib use magic. After observing it for a while, I realized that every time you were using this technique, you were gathering a small amount of mana. And after finally when you fought the vampire and drained his magic with this technique, you created a magical core for yourself. Merlin said. Orion after hearing this finally realized just how much broken this technique could be. What will happen if Mars learn this technique? Will everyone have magic? Orion's imagination started to go wild. Even Merlin thought about it earlier. However, after observing the Orion, he can tell that not everyone can learn this technique. Maybe even I in my prime, could not. Merlin could not help but sigh. One minute, what you mean by that? Since how long have you been spying on me? Orion suddenly asked. At this Merlin again smiled. Since you got my inheritance from that pendant all those years ago. I wasn't able to contact you because you didn't have magic back then. Oh. Orion just nodded. I have more questions to ask, Orion said. Oh, that's fine, I will answer them all for you but before that, you should really read this letter. It's from a very special place, Merlin pointed towards a letter with an owl. He took the letter and then read it. Dear Orion D. Ambrosius. We are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find enclosed a list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1st. We await your owl by no later than July 31st. Yours sincerely. Minerva McGonagall Deputy Headmistress. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uniform. First year students will require. 1.3 sets of plain work robes, black. 2.1 plain pointed hat, black, for day wear. 3.1 pair of protective gloves, dragon hide or similar. 4.1 winter cloak, black, with silver fastenings. Please note that all pupils' clothes should carry name tags. Course books All students should have a copy of each of the following. The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1, by Miranda Goshawk. A History of Magic by Bartilda Bagshot. Magical Theory by Ad Albert Waffling. A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Americ Switch. 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Philida Spore. Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenius Jigger. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. Other Equipment. One Wand. One Cauldron, Pewter, Standard Size 2. One Set Glass or Crystal Files. One Telescope. One Set Brass Scales. Students may also bring an owl or a cat or a toad. Parents are reminded that first years are not allowed their own. Broomstick. Well, I'll be damn. I'm going to Hogwarts. Chapter 4, Chapter 4, A Talk with Merlin. After talking with Merlin and getting a basic understanding of his situation, Orion finally asked. So, if you know my memories then you should know, just what kind of shitstorm is awaiting us all, Orion asked. Merlin too nodded at this. At first, when he saw just how much trouble was ahead of them in the upcoming seven years, he just sighed. Can you help me get stronger? Orion did not beat around the bush and directly asked. Merlin, as if waiting for Orion to ask this, smiled. Well, of course, I will help. There is a reason I left behind a part of my soul to teach my successor after all. Merlin said with an upbeat tone. Really, Orion narrowed his eyes. Over the years, I have learned at least one thing. There is nothing for free. Don't tell me that you want me to get stronger and then defeat some big bad villain to save the world, Orion asked and Merlin almost choked on this. I'm well, it's something like that. But it's important, if you don't then the world will be destroyed, Merlin said, caught red-handed. Orion at this just shook his head. Wow, 
I just repeated some common trope from my previous world. Who would have thought, right? Orion could not help but chuckle a little. Okay then, tell me what exactly you want from me? He asked with a little serious tone. Don't worry about that. I will naturally tell you. Right now, just focus on recovering and learning. Merlin said looking at Orion's now weak frame and pale face. Fine, so can you teach me anything? He asked Merlin. Of course I can, but unfortunately you don't have enough magic power to do anything right now, Merlin said. Orion at this just blinked. What do you mean, not enough magic power? Didn't you just say that I opened my magic thanks to that technique of mine and absorbing that vampire's magic? Orion asked. Well you see, most of your magic power which you gather in all this time, was used in creating the magic core and fighting with that vampire. So you ended up starting with a very weak magic. Even the magic that you extract from that vampire, ended up being used to heal you. You see, your magic core was badly damaged after you burst out with that powerful magical power last time. You can't do that until you are a little older. Whatever you did back then, immediately shot up your magic to the roof, but came at a cost. You lost most of your magical power. Merlin said with a little amazement and curiosity of his own. I guess, I need to do a little testing to understand about this special power of mine, Orion said after thinking about it a little. Merlin at this also nodded. If I am not wrong then soon, a professor from Hogwarts will come. I have some time on my hands. I better get a head start, Orion said. That's good, but the real problem still stands. You currently, only somewhat of power similar to that of a five or six year old wizard. Not nearly enough to learn any usual magic. Merlin said. Yeah, Orion too nodded and sighed. Merlin after a little wait finally said. How about we start with some basic magic knowledge and set the foundation for you, and then start testing your special technique, and if possible also give it a name while we are at it. Only after that, we will have enough knowledge to plan further. Merlin advised and Orion too nodded. So after that, Merlin ended up teaching Orion the basics of magic and helping him learn about his own power too. A week later. I am sure that soon a Hogwarts professor will visit, Merlin said. Orion too nodded to that. He looked up and noticed the phoenix flying. At first, he thought that the phoenix was just there and helped him out but, that wasn't the case. That phoenix is staying with him now, almost like he is connected somehow with the phoenix. So he ended up naming the bird. He named it after his best friend, Red. Red, do you see anything? Orion asked. The phoenix did reply but Orion could hardly understand what the bird wanted to convey. He needs to spend some more time with the phoenix for him to under all his quirks. Orion, it's done. Drink it now. Merlin said. Orion also quickly acted and drank the potion, in front of him. It was a very simple potion which gave nutrients to the body. Merlin taught him how to make it and it was making a difference to his body. Now, at least he was not feeling the weakness throughout his body. Your body has improved a lot after this long time. Shame that we don't have enough magical ingredients. Otherwise by now, you would have completely been cured of your weakness. Merlin said. It's fine, I might be able to find a useful potion in the diagonal ally after the professor from Hogwarts takes me there, Orion replied and smiled. In a week, Orion learned a lot about his special technique which he now calls integration. After testing out his technique, he and Merlin figure out that the technique takes mana of all kinds, gathered and combined with Orion's magic. Plus while Orion does this, his body also changes that magic to his optimum state, as if that magic always belongs to Orion and is not stolen from someone else. Giving no compatibility problem to Orion. Merlin was baffled at this, even he Merlin was now a little jealous of Orion. In his words. If I had this power then I could have defeated her back then, and maybe even stop, that is what Orion overheads before Merlin shuts his mouth. Orion still doesn't know what exactly Merlin is hiding. Anyways besides that. The technique itself allows Orion to continuously increase his magic and become stronger. This is nothing less than cheating. A cheat indeed, Merlin sighed, shaking his head at the unfairness of life. Besides that, another very important thing which Orion and Merlin found out about integration was that it has a different effect when done internally. It's almost like burning his own magic power like how the sun burns the gas to keep up the heat. This happens when Orion does not gather mana from outside but condenses his mana internally. This almost acts like supernova and increases his power quite a bit. It's almost like entering a magical version of Kayakin. It's a Dragon Ball reference if any of you don't know. But power comes at a cost. 
This internal integration permanently reduces his mana capacity. Not to mention, because of his atrocious control, he even ended up damaging his mana core. In simple terms, it's exactly opposite to the normal integratioid technique where Orion increases his magic power. Internal integration gives him a short-term power boost and then permanently decreases his magical power. Of course, Orion can always increase his magic back with normal integration but in the end, it's a dangerous technique. Merlin is apparent that Orion should not use internal integration if it's not important. Something to which Orion too agrees. Who would like to permanently decrease their magic? Only a madman. All right, let ends today's class with a simple question. Tell me what is magic and all the different levels of magicians, Merlin asked. Orion took a little time and then said. Magic is the chaotic energy which brings changes to the normal world with the intent of a wizard, Orion said. Merlin nodded at this but still added. True but remember that there are more aspects aside from power and intent in magic. There are mainly four aspects through which magic works. Power, intent, control, spells and other methods of controlling magic, and authority, law. Unfortunately, nowadays wizards only focus on the first three and even that they don't do right. Merlin added. Orion makes sure to remember that and then continues his answer. There are nine known levels of a magician. Level 1, Novice. Level 2, Intermediate. Level 3, Advance. Level 4, Master. Level 5, Grand Master. Level 6, Warlock. Level 7, Mage. Level 8, Royals. Level 9, King or Magus. Most of the wizarding world right now is stuck at advanced level at best, Orion said. Merlin nodded and added. Orion after getting a solid foundation of magic from Merlin, was excited to learn magic. He couldn't wait for the Hogwarts professor to come. He has many questions that he needs answers to. Like his own name, Orion D. Ambrosius. Is Ambrosius a name of a noble wizarding house, it at least sounds like that. Should he run to Gringotts for a blood test to find whether he has devil luck and got an inheritance from a powerful family? What do the D stands for? Does he have the will of D and will be the joy boy of this world? And lastly, what the hell Merlin is not telling him. There are just too many questions which he is not sure about. Chapter 5, Chapter 5, Diagonally. After understanding the world of magic and his special powers, thanks to Merlin, Orion finally was ready to start practicing magic. But the problem with his small amount of mana still stands in his way. Let's see, is there as any magic which you can learn without much magical power and a wand? Merlin questions himself but also says it so Orion can hear him. Orion who was admiring his phoenix red, suddenly looked at Merlin. Orion nodded, waiting for an answer. He just realized that Merlin here knows Harry Potter better than him. Most likely, because he can see my memories. I can't remember them all but it's there somewhere, Orion thought to himself. Correct, Merlin nodded and said. TCH, this old man is still reading my mind, Orion wanted to find a way to stop him from doing that. Merlin at this just gave him his best embarrass, Gandalf's smile. You are correct with that. I can see your memories and humans or wizards, never forget anything. They just can't recall the information back. This happens because the information or memories in this case are not managed and ranged systematically. Merlin said and there was a knowing smile. You know, I just know what exactly to teach you with no wand and very little magic, Merlin said and beamed. Orion too knew what exactly Merlin was talking about. He too wanted to learn Legilimensi and Aclumensi. All right, then let's do it, Orion said with a determined grim. Minus one week later. Professor McGonagall was a very busy woman. This was especially true, at the start of every new Hogwarts year. This is because, Albus to many names Dumbledore, literally dropped all of his esteem duties on her and wasted his time on eating sweets and knitting sweaters. Why the address is a forest. McGonagall couldn't help but take another look at the address she was holding. But after seeing the address again, she assured herself and entered into the forest. What in Merlin's name, this boy is doing in the forest, McGonagall wondered. She took out her wand and removed all the small plants and bushes which stood in her way. Soon she finally found a clearing. She saw a ten-year-old doing some form of mull exercise. He was not wearing any clothes on his upper body. She could see the small muscles on him but also she saw the child panting. This child was Orion, who had more or less recovered his physical state, at least he was close to what a normal child was supposed to be. Previously, he was much more physically fit. 
Before McGonagall could even say anything, she heard a sound. Gawk. She looked up and almost her wand fell off her hand. A phoenix was flying there. Orion also noticed this, in fact, he was the one who asked Red to tell him if there was anyone around. He didn't want to be in the situation where he had to fight with a vampire out of the blue again. Orion looked around to find any intruders. There, Merlin who noticed McGonagall pointed. Orion seeing the old woman with a wand got a little alert but didn't make any move. He immediately wore his shirt and called out. Who are you? By this time, Red came down and took his position, on top of Orion should. Even Orion doesn't know, why Red liked that place to sit, that much. McGonagall, who was following the phoenix noticed the majestic creature coming down and sitting on Orion's shoulder. Only then did she come to her senses. Mr. Ambrosius, she said. My name is Orion, he said. Yes yes, you are Orion D. Ambrosius, are you not? McGonagall asked. Well, that at least the letter says so, I only know that my name is Orion, Orion finally eased his tension. If the women in front of him, know his name, which even he didn't know until a few days ago. Then most likely this person from Hogwarts. Nice to meet you, Mr. Ambrosius, I am Professor McGonagall, I teach transfiguration in Hogwarts. McGonagall said. Orion acted a little surprised. And here I almost thought that someone was pranking me, Orion mutters but makes sure that McGonagall can hear him. I assure you that it's no joke, Mr. Ambrosius, McGonagall said with a stern voice, looking very professional. Well that's fine, I believe you. Not like I know about myself any more than my own name. But, I still need proof that magic exists from you, you see that one part is hard to believe even if I want to, Orion said. He did not even consider that a living and breathing phoenix was resting on his shoulder, before asking this question. McGonagall too didn't think about it much as a phoenix in the eyes of a mole is nothing but a big red bird. She too only can tell the difference between a phoenix and a normal red bird because Albus to many names Dumbledore has a phoenix of his own. The only person in the world, to owe a phoenix, at least what she knows. So from that point onward, everything was almost similar to what happened to all the Mulborn wizards. She even did a cool magic trick for Orion. Although Orion wanted to know whether he was one of those miles born with a cool name as Ambrosius, or whether he belonged to any ancient wizarding family. McGonagall gave a brief introduction about Hogwarts and magic. Orion kept on listening. He wanted to ask Professor McGonagall about his name. How does the school know my name? I'm some son of destiny myself who will break fate and rotate the wheel of times under his feet. It's amazing just how much nonsense you can think about while talking with someone, Merlin said from the side with amusement in his eyes. Orion had an urge to roll his eyes but he pushed that urge back. It took some time to explain to Professor McGonagall about his situation. How he is an orphan. How he ran away from there because of the constant beating and abuse he was suffering there. How he lived his life after that and why is he right now living in a forest. Of course. He got a lot of nagging from the serious-looking women in front of her but by the end of it, she understood his situation. Surprisingly, there was no mention of his Ambrosius lineage at all from her, making him believe that he is just that, a normal orphan. Diagonally. After talking with Professor McGonagall for another ten minutes, she ended up taking Orion to the Diagon Ally. What was that? Orion asked with a spinning head. That was apparition, Mr. Ambrosius. It's a magical form of transport. It teleports us from one place to another, McGonagall replied, already in front of the entrance of the diagonally. Orion saw her tapping the wall with her wand and then a path opened up for both of them. Wow, Orion unconsciously mutters. Merlin, who only Orion can see and listen, also looked a little surprised. But his response was for a different reason. How come the magical world has not progressed at all after my time? These wizards and witches are weak. Their blood also has almost lost the ancient magic, Orion heard Merlin talking about this. Are you sure that they are that weak, Orion asked Merlin through his thoughts. Merlin just nodded. This talking was happening in their mind. Are they really weak? Orion asked after hearing Merlin mutter after watching other wizards and witches there. Yes, but not in the way you think. Well we'll talk about it later on, Merlin said and grumbled under his breath. Mr. Ambrosius. Welcome to the Diagon Alley, said Professor McGonagall. There was a little smirk on her face when she noticed Orion's reaction to the Diagon Alley. So, where are we going from here, Professor Orion asked. We first need to go to Gringotts, it's Wizard's Bank, McGonagall said and started walking towards the Gringotts. 
Well here it is, finally entering into the wizarding world, Orion took a second and muttered to himself. Yes, I too want to see what exactly has happened to the world I left behind all those years ago. Your memories are fine but they are nothing but a picture. You will soon find that the reality is much different, my friend, Merlin said and smiled. Chapter 6, Chapter 6, Gringotts and Olivanders. After finally entering the Diagon Alley, Professor McGonagall took Orion to the Gringotts. Throughout the way, Orion saw many magical artifacts and items. But honestly, he likes the modern world more than this old-style world. Finally, both came in front of the Gringot. He saw the famous lines the moment he was about to enter the building. Enter, stranger, but take heed. Of what awaits the sin of greed. For those who take, but do not earn. Must pay most dearly in their turn. So if you seek beneath our floors. A treasure that was never yours. Thief, you have been warned, aware. Of finding more than treasure there. Are the classic, Orion had a little smile on his face. Finally upon entering, Professor McGonagall talked with the goblins. Orion was just observing. He wanted to ask if there was any way to find his parents as he read in all the fan fictions. But before they can do that, Professor McGonagall calls him. Professor McGonagall then gives him the money. Ah, one minute, should they not test my blood claim or something, Orion almost said out loud. When he was just about to say something, he heard a voice. Don't worry about this. We can find out about your blood claim later on. Right now it's better to not test your blood. It might bring more trouble. Trouble which you can't handle without getting stronger Merlin said, but Orion almost felt that he knew something which he was not talking about. Orion was not sure what exactly Merlin meant but he agreed with him. So both of them quickly got out of Gringotts. After that, both of them directly went to purchase all the other important things. He had only two tasks. He needed to give his measurements to Madame Malkins to get his uniforms ready and get his wand. These two tasks usually take the most time and absolutely need Orion's presence. McGonagall herself went around and took all the required items by herself. So what do you think, Orion finally could not take it any more and asked after giving his measurement to Madame Malkins and the moving towards the Olivander's shop. As I said, these wizards are much weaker than what wizards used to be in the past. I believe that there are three reasons, Merlin replied. Go on, I'm listening, Orion asked while searching for the Ollivander's shops. Well, there are mainly three reasons. Firstly, the knowledge about thousands of years of magical progress has been lost, and their knowledge about magic is shallow. Second, they are slowly losing the pure magical blood of the old era and lastly, they have entirely no concept of magical law or magical authority. However, the last one is understandable, considering that even in my time, only the most excellent wizards understood the law of magic. I am positive that none of them understands the ancient magic after the current magical style became popular. Merlin said. Current magical style? Orion sounded confused. Yes, in the old days, this system didn't use to exist. Although it's much simpler to use and easy to understand, but it's weaker and limits the wizard, Merlin said. So the ancient magic system is better? Orion asked while finally spotting the Ollivander's shop. Not exactly, for many people, this modern system is better. Not everyone has the talent and aptitude to learn the in-depth workings of magic. But if someone wants to understand magic and get stronger, then this modern way is a hindrance, it's almost like going to the wrong path. Merlin said. Oh, then I have to learn the ancient magic system, Orion said. He in his mind has already been determined to become the best and the strongest. I will teach you the ancient magic system but I advise you to learn this modern method as well. Try to combine both of them and make a special hybrid system for yourself. Because although strong, the ancient system was harder to learn and much slower. Merlin said. Orion just gave a nod and then entered the Ollivander shop. He noticed an old man there, he was showing wands to a bushy-haired girl there. Oh, don't tell me she's who I think she is, Orion almost let out an excited scream. But he calmed himself down and gave a friendly smile to the girl who was trying to find a wand for herself. Hello, I am Ryan, Orion said with a smile and extended his arms towards the girl. The girl has slightly bigger two front teeth and a pretty looking face. Hello, I'm Hermione Granger, she replied and Orion smiled. Yup, she is Hermione know it all Granger and god she looks like Emma Watson, well not exactly but to some extent, I still believe Emma is much prettier than this. Someone thinking about stealing other people's girl, Merlin had a sly smile on his face. Orion just gave the old man a cold stare, telling him to shut up and looked back at Hermione. 
but before he could say anything, Mr. Ollivander came out with a wand. Here ems grander, try this one, he said, handing Hermione the wand. The moment Hermione touched the wand, there was a light and warm feeling around the shop. Ah, vinewood with dragon heart string at the core, a very good wand for charms work, ems granger, said Mr. Ollivander and smiled. Orion wanted to say more but before that, Hermione gave Ollivander seven galleons and then with a smile went out of the shop. Seems like you have bad luck with the fair gender, my friend. Merlin smile. Orion decided to just ignore the annoying old Gandalf and just get a wand for himself. I will talk with her later, he thought, taking a mental note. And who you might be young man. Mr. Ollivander then asked looking at Orion. I am Orion, sir. Orion D. Ambrosius, Orion said. Ah, a Mulborn wizard I assume. Is this your first time in the Diagonale Mr. Ambrosius? Ollivander genuinely looked interested. Yes, Mr. Ollivander. I see, I see. Then let's find a wand for you, Mr. Ambrosius, Ollivander said. After that, he looked at Orion's hands. You are right-handed, Ollivander asked. Ah yes, how you know, Orion could not help but ask. Ha ha, when you are in this business as long I have been Mr. Ambrosius, you just know. Ollivander's vague answer left much to desire but Orion did not pursue the topic anymore. He quickly went inside and bought a black box. Inside lay a brown wand. Here take this, Ollivander handed the wand to Orion. Orion took it and... Why nothing is happening, Orion could not help but ask. Strange? Ollivander quote. He was expecting a reaction, at least some kind of reaction. He then took out another box from somewhere and gave it to Orion. Here try this, Ollivander said. Again nothing happened. Orion knocked his head a little to the side in confusion. Hey Merlin, do you know what's going on here? Orion asks. Remember when I said that you currently don't have enough magic? These ones are not summiting to you, they are too powerful for your magic right now. Merlin said. So, what should I do? Orion asks Merlin. But before the answer to that question came, Ollivander said. This is strange but I have experienced something like this before. I believe that your magic, Mr. Ambrosius is so weak that the ones are not recognizing you? Ollivander said. Oh, okay Orion too just nodded like he understood Mr. Ollivander. So, what should I do, Mr. Ollivander, Orion asked. Don't worry, although it's unusual but, I have a one just for you, Ollivander said and rushed in. What's he gonna do? Orion asked Merlin. Simple, strong ones are not gonna submit to you. So he just gonna bring a weak one for you. Merlin said. But that means that I have to use that weak wand all this time, Orion grumbled. Yes, but it doesn't matter when you are strong enough, you can make a staff of your own, Merlin said. You mean a wand Orion corrected. Yes a wand, but I prefer a staff more, Merlin said. Do you know how to make a wand, Orion was apparent that he wanted a wand and not a staff. Yes, I will help you make a wand when you are at least a grandmaster, Merlin said. Orion wanted to protest. Right now he is just a level 1 novice, hell even worse than that as his magic is so weak, reaching from level 1 to level 5 and only then he can make a wand for himself. He better just purchase a wand later on from Mr. Ollivander. But after thinking that those wands might have a trace from the ministry, he did not say anything. Here Mr. Ambrosius, try this wand. Mr. Ollivander came and handed him an old looking reddish brown wand. Orion just took the wand and felt the magic moving inside him immediately. A small light he cast a luma's charm, appear on the tip of the wand. Excellent, the wand is perfect for you, Mr. Ambrosius. Ollivander said. Orion to this just gave a small smile, man, I really wanted something better. Orion thought and Merlin from the side just shook his head. But maybe seeing Orion's down look, Ollivander said. Don't worry lad, over the years, you can practice your magic and it will become stronger. I'll wait for you when you come back to my shop again for a wand which will more suit you. Mr. Ambrosius. Ollivander said. Thank you, Mr. Ollivander. How much will this wand will cost? Orion asked. Nah take it, it's a very old wand which I made when I was just learning wand craft. I used oak and boutruckle leaf to make it, consider it a gift. Ollivander said. Orion at this just smiled and thanked Mr. Ollivander. Getting out he said. That saves me some galleons, maybe I can use it for something useful? Orion said. Yes, it's possible, and don't forget that you will also save money by not getting pet. You have read after all Merlin said. Oh yeah, that will help, Orion smiled. Chapter 7, 
Chapter 7, King Cross Station. What are you doing in a forest, Mr. Ambrosius? Asked Professor McGonagall. I live here, Orion replied. Why in the Merlin's name you do that? McGonagall asked with an exclamation. Because this is the only place I have, Orion said with a deadpan. I mean what she was expecting. He had been camping there for five years. This followed a long lecture from Professor McGonagall, about how a child shouldn't live in a forest. This conversation happened when McGonagall first visited him. It's already been more than thirty days since then. And that is the reason, right now he is not in the forest anymore. Professor McGonagall was apparent that she would not let a child live alone in the forest, no matter the case. So she ended up bringing Orion to the leaky cauldron. Orion was first worried about the money but Professor McGonagall took care of it. She pulled some strings and Tom, the owner of the leaky cauldron let Orion in. Over one month, Orion learns mind arts from Merlin, and he also masters some very low power charms. Like Lumos. A very basic light spell. Magic is surprisingly like Chakra from Naruto, Orion said after listening to Merlin's explaining magic to him. Yes, that ninja show from your memories. I like the story of that cartoon. Merlin said. He too in his free time watched some of Orion's memories and saw some of the modern anime and movies he watched in his previous life. It's not cartoon, it's anime, Orion immediately corrected. It's a sin, anime lovers know. Yeah yeah, Merlin too by now, thanks to all his time spent with Orion and stealing his memories, knew Orion well and just waved his hands to shrug the matter, like he didn't care. Anyways, let's check out the three spells which you learned before going to King Cross, Merlin said. Ah, okay, Orion said and took out his wand. Lumos he said and with a correct hand gesture, a small light appeared on the tip of the wand. Good, need more power but that will have to wait. Considering your cheat ability, you will get stronger sooner than later. Merlin said. Yup, I am gonna integrate like crazy the moment I arrive in Hogwarts, Orion said. Considering that the magic in Hogwarts will be in more abundance than in a forest, he is sure that he can achieve what he did in five years in a forest, in just a year. Okay, second spell Merlin who could read Orion's mind and saw that he was getting distracted said. Wingardium Leviosa Orion said. His target was a piece of paper, for the lack of a feather. But nothing happened. Orion waited, pushing more and more power. Today's test is important as Merlin told him that he will teach him a cool magical trick if he can pull off these three spells. According to Merlin, besides power, another important thing which Orion is missing here is intent. If his intent and willpower are strong, then it's possible to lift the piece of paper with his mere amount of magic. And if there is one thing which Ryan has in tons after that draining integration for five years then it's willpower. That technique took every bit of his willpower to perform. When Merlin first saw just how much willpower and focus Orion had, he was baffled. Even war veterans don't possess this kind of focus and willpower. This one thing alone gave him an idea of just what kind of potential Orion holds. So, he waited. And sure enough, the piece of paper floated. Got it, Orion exclaims in joy. Merlin just smiled and said. Last spell. Yes, Orion quickly said. This particular spell was something which he learned from Merlin. A very old spell which he created to learn things faster. He brags a lot about it, saying just how incredible this spell is and generally wizards have to do rituals to do what he is teaching Orion with just a spell. To demonstrate this, he needs to learn the subjects in front of him. So in the last 30 days, he dedicated his time to using this technique and learning all of these subjects quickly. Now, even before the start of school, Thanks to Merlin he has all the theological knowledge needed to pass the exams which are about to come. So, what followed was Merlin asking him multiple questions about all the subjects that Ryan would be learning in Hogwarts. Once he answered all Merlin's questions, Merlin finally said. Good, now let's get going, we better reach the King Cross Station on time, Merlin said and Orion just nodded. Dash. King Cross Station. Are you sure that this is the place, Merlin asked. Yes, this is the place. I am sure about it. Orion assured himself. This entire thing was pretty new to him. Although he had learned a lot of things about the modern world he still found this all overwhelming a little. But only a little, he is a man who has lived for more than 1000 years in the past. He has seen time changing before. There see, Orion said pointing towards a particular wall. Being with Merlin all this time surely helped him, because he spots the wall enhancement on the wall with a mere look. Good. How did you find it? Merlin asked. Simple, 
I just sense the magical fluctuation, Orion said. With Merlin's teaching, this is pretty easy. You gonna run inside, Merlin asked with an amused tone. Orion just scoffed at this. That's stupid. There are a lot of things in the movie and books which don't make sense and he only knew it after Merlin pointed them out. Now Merlin casually makes jokes about those things. This world is real, and much deeper than those movies and books, Orion mutters, imitating what Merlin told him time and time again. So with that said, he entered inside the wall and found himself coming outside of another station altogether. In front of him was a red steam engine. For some reason, Orion had a really big smile on his face. Merlin knew, he too was smiling. It's the feeling of going on an adventure. Hey look there, Merlin said and pointed. Orion shifted his gaze and looked towards a particular bushy-haired girl. There was a shine in his eyes. Before dying, he was only fifteen years old. So he naturally has seen Harry Potter and had a crush on Hermione. You are not going, Merlin asked. Well I want to but not right now, maybe I will talk with her in Hogwarts, Orion said and looked around. He wanted to find the child of prophecy first. Where is Harry Potter? Orion was wondering. He looked around to find him but could not. So he changed his target and looked for the Wesleys. But they were not there either. Guess I am just early, Orion thought and finally decided to just get inside the train and find a sit for himself. By the way, which house you are planning to join? Merlin asked. I am not sure, I don't want to enter either Gryffindor or Slytherin. Both are troublesome. The best one for me is Ravenclaw, Orion said but internally he was also contemplating about joining Gryffindor as being in that house has some perk when Harry Potter is also in Hogwarts. Good choice, back then I too wanted to join Ravenclaw, Merlin said. Oh yes, you two were a part of Hogwarts right? How come you ended up joining Slytherin? Orion asked in his head because there were other people around. I never joined Hogwarts as a student, I came as a teacher for a very short time. And that's when I joined the Slytherin. That too for a reason. Merlin said. What reason? Orion asked with curiosity. I might tell you later, for the time being, let's find a good sit, Merlin said. Orion too just shrugged and sat down on the first empty seat he could find. Chapter 8, Chapter 8, Rose Potter. Orion might be for the first time in his life was so excited. Which kid didn't dream about having magic, beating terrorists in his school and becoming the Mr. Cool guy? Even in his previous life, he was only sixteen when he died so from his heart, he is still not an adult. So, he was extremely excited to find himself a seat and quickly settle down. I know that you are excited but remember that the moment you enter into Hogwarts, you are under the watch of the Ministry, Merlin said, throwing cold water on Orion's dreams. Yeah there is that as well, do you have any idea how that trace works? Orion could not help but ask. I have some idea. Like the trace itself is not placed on the wand if you are wondering after reading that fanfiction in your previous world. The tracing charm is placed on the underage wizard and not the wand. My best guess is that you will be placed under that trace when you enter through that boat ride. That is the only thing which is different from the rest of the students and the first year, Merlin said and Orion's eyes narrowed a little. Want me to avoid the entire boat ride and enter through another side, Orion asked. I want nothing, my friend, it's you who matter. Do you don't want to trace on you then you can try this. It might or might not work. I just have a hunch that it will work, Merlin said with a mischievous smile on his face. Orion then just mentally made a note to not follow the first years. He was about to ask another question, a habit he had developed after getting most of the answers from Merlin about the magical world, but at this time someone entered the cabin. Oh, we will talk later, Orion said after watching a girl coming and switch to talking in his mind. Merlin can read his mind so it's a good thing in some cases. Merlin just smiled and puffed on his pipe, and suddenly started to shrink in size. Under just a second he was no bigger than a mouse. Orion who was watching this from the side, did not even notice that the girl was calling him. Hello, are you listening? asked the red-haired girl. Orion finally got out of his shock and looked at the girl. Orion quickly made a mental note to ask about this size changing magic to Merlin later and then replied to the girl. Ah yes, sorry I was thinking about something and didn't notice you there, Orion quickly said. Oh, that's fine, I wanted to ask whether I can sit here? Asked the girl. Yes yes, please come in, Orion replied without much delay. And only then did, he notice the features of the girl. The girl had red hair, with glasses on. She was frail, almost more frail than what Orion was a month ago after fighting with that vampire. 
She had emerald green eyes, its contrast with his own blue eyes. Do you need some help? Orion offered to help after noticing that the girl having a problem handling her luggage. Ah yes please, it's pretty heavy, the girl agreed and smiled a little with embarrassment. Orion stood up and took the luggage from the girl's hand and without any difficulty, he was able to put it up in the upper section of the cabin. After that he finally let the girl come inside and she sat opposite him. Hello, I am Orion D. Ambrosius, nice to meet you, Orion said with a charming smile. The girl blushed a little at this. Ah yes, nice to meet you too, I am Rose Potter, said the girl. Orion from his side blinked. Merlin who was now small as a mouse too looked at the girl with a little amazement. Potter. Are you sure that your name is Potter? Orion could not help but ask with a little suspicion on his face. Rose thought, who might be expecting this reaction, just rose her hairs covering her forehead and there it was. The lightning sign scar on her forehead. Only then did Orion realize that his journey in his magical world might be not as smooth sailing as he was thinking. This might be not exactly the Harry Potter world but an alternative universe, Orion thought and Merlin too nodded but he was not that surprised. It was Orion's fault for not checking for differences between this world and the canon Harry Potter world. But Orion still asked to double check. You, by any chance do you have a brother? Orion asked. Oh no, I don't think that I have one, Rose too sounded pretty confused at the sudden question. Oh okay, sorry for the sudden question, Orion said with a smile. And that was enough to close that subject there. Orion doesn't plan to talk more about it and Rose is too slight to ask more. So Rose, I can call you that right? Orion asked still keeping his smile. Rose just nodded. Are you also a first year? Orion asked, already knowing the answer. The second year don't sit in this part of the train. Rose just nodded again. Brilliant, then which house are you planning to go to? Orion asked curiously. Rose after hearing this question, looked confused a little. Let me guess, you don't know that we are supposed to enter into a house, Orion asked with a pleasant smile. No, Rose shook her head, looking down. It's fine, I too only know about this because I just happened to talk with upperclassmen when I was standing on the King Cross station. There are four houses in total. Gryffindor. Ravenclaw. Hufflepuff. Slytherin, Orion said one by one. By this time he noticed that Rose lacked confidence. Orion observes Rose carefully, trying to understand what kind of life she would have lived up to this point. And unfortunately, it was still similar to the canon Harry. So, which house are you planning to go to? Rose Potter suddenly asked. Well, there are only two houses which I am interested in going. I either want to go to the Gryffind or the Ravenclaw, Orion said. He told the truth. Any other house will hold him back. Slytherin are all Pulard bigots while Hufflepuff is just a big no. Nothing against the house but no. Rose wanted to ask why the Gryffind or or Ravenclaw but before that, a red-haired boy entered the cabin. Orion knew this guy. Hello, can I sit here? There is no other place left, Ron said. This guy was, of course, Ron Weasley. Orion also noticed that this guy somewhat looked similar to what he remembered from the movies but it's not exactly the same. The same was the case with Hermione Granger as well. Sure. Sure, both Rose and Orion said. Later on, the situation was very similar to what happened in both movies and books. Ron totally freaks out about the girl who lived. He then being a kid and an idiot asked whether Rose remembered about that night when she got that scar. Orion could not help but roll his eyes. He also noticed Rose was uncomfortable after Ron asked this question. Surely this is a sore subject for her, so Orion decided to change the subject. Let's not talk about that. Tell me Ron, which house are you planning to go to, Orion asked with a smile. Gryffindor, a response immediately came. I always thought Ron's character is not done justice. But after seeing this, JK, Rowling might be right with his character, Orion thought to himself and the miniature Merlin who was sitting there also nodded. From that point onwards the normal talk happened. The train also started and all three of them, four if Merlin is counted, were enjoying. Rose, just like Harry from Canon even purchased a lot of candies later on. Rose, show me your hand, Orion asked suddenly. He wanted to check something. Rose who was eating a chocolate frog looked at Orion in confusion. She did not think much and showed her hands. Orion knew after one good look that Rose was suffering from malnutrition. Not sure about the physical abuse but she sure is not getting much to eat, Orion thought. Your body is currently really weak Rose. You need a lot of nutrition, Orion said. 
Rose was a little taken aback that Orion noticed that. She didn't know how to answer that. One minute, Orion said and took out his bag, taking something out of it. He then hands it over to Rose. Here, it is a simple potion which I made. It will provide you with the necessary nutrition. I too was very frail before the professor came. Later on, I drank this particular potion for some time. I don't need it anymore as you can see and I have enough that it will last you for the next two weeks, Orion said. Rose did not say anything, just opened the cap of the bottle and inhaled the bad smell of the potion, making a weird face. I know, I know, it doesn't smell the best and it tastes even worse but it will fix your body. You will be able to carry that big bag of yours, yourself if you take that. Orion after seeing Rose making faces had to put some good words for the potion. Ron on the side watched this but did not interfere. He knew nothing about potions. Rose although didn't like the potion smell showed a bright smile when noticed that someone had given her something for her health. Thank you, Orion. I will make sure to take this, Rose said with a cute smile and even took a sip then and there. Orion could practically see her face turning different shades of black, blue and green. But she drank it nonetheless. Orion gave an I know it tastes like shit smile. But soon, Rose started to feel the heat. Her body was getting hot it almost felt like she had suddenly bursting with energy. This is brilliant, Rose could not help but exclaim. She has been malnutrition all her life, she always had a lack of energy and power. But this magical potion just made her awake like this was the first time she had taken a full sleep in a long time. Orion smiled and was about to ask how she was feeling but at this time, another girl came inside the train cabin. And here comes the crush of our future wizard king, Merlin said, teasing Orion. Chapter 9, Chapter 9, The Golden Trio Rose Potter had never been more confused and happy in her entire life. All sorts of weird and freakish things used to happen around her, her aunt and uncle always called her a freak. Her life was full of pain and loneliness. She lives under a cupboard, under constant abuse from her relatives. She had to work for them, like making them food, cleaning the house and so on. She almost considers that her normal life. But then something magical happened. A bunch of letters suddenly burst into the house and told her that she was a witch. Then her grid came to take her to the Diagonelli. She got her wand, got her a new pet and everything. She still could not believe that this all was reality. And finally, she found a possibility of making friends. She with all her expected, boarded the Hogwarts Express. And the first person she talked to was, Orion. She saw a black-haired and blue-eyed boy, quite handsome if Rose has anything to say about it. He acted weird at first but later both of them talked just fine. He knew much more than her. He told her about the houses in Hogwarts. He said that he wanted to go into either Ravenclaw or Gryffindor. And as they were talking, another boy entered the train cabin. Ron Weasley, a red-haired boy with a loud voice. She has come to understand that she is for some reason famous. Everyone in the Diagon Alley was acting like fans of her. But not like she liked it. For a socially stunted and abused child, sudden fame is nothing. What they are missing is affection and companionship. And both Ron and Orion were similar, at least what she thought at first. Although Orion was a little stunted at first but then he acted like a normal person. Well not like Rose Potter knew what normal is anymore. All her life, she had lived along with the Dursleys. That couldn't be further away from normal. Ron on the other hand was a different case. He ranted off and off about her being the saviour of the magical Britain. Even reminded Rose of the death of her parents, something which she didn't like to talk about. But at that time, she noticed that Orion changed the subject suddenly. He was thankful to him for that. But later on, she was more grateful towards him as the boy gave a potion to her. A potion which will improve her physique. Before this, besides her grit so gave her a birthday cake and her pet, Hedwig. It smelled like a gutter and tasted even worse. But soon enough she felt it. The head and energy inside her. Maybe, maybe I made a new friend? Rose could not help wondering. And this spread a smile on her face. Dash. Orion saw Hermione coming inside the train cabin. He was about to greet her but she talked first. Did anyone have seen a toad? Hermione asked. Yeah, I almost forgot that she doesn't have much interaction with others. No wonder she comes as rude and bossy. Orion thought and smiled. Nice to meet you too, Orion said with a small smile on his face. Hermione who just barged in the cabin heard Orion and blushed a little in embarrassment. And no, I don't think that either of us has seen a toad here, Orion still had his smile on his face. Hermione nodded at this and was about to go out but before that she caught Ron doing some magic. 
Ron just wanted to show off a little, as neither Orion nor Rose was giving him attention after the potion was in Rose's hands. So he tried, which didn't work, just like in the books and movies. Turn this fat rat yellow, Ron completed his made-up spell and nothing happened. Then Hermione decided to see how to do it and took out her wand. She almost did it flawlessly. Both Ron and Rose were amazed. But Orion just kept on looking at the spell with narrowed eyes. She repaired Rose's broken glasses. Orion could have done it but he doesn't have enough magical power for that. In fact, according to Merlin, he might not be able to do magic more powerful than Luma's or a normal levitation charm until he absorbs Hogwarts magic for at least three to four months. He didn't like this feeling at all, it was almost like he was lacking a limb or an eye. So he didn't do anything, in fact, he can't do anything, at least not for the time being. I don't know whether you remember but we met on the Ollivanders, Orion reminded Hermione. Hermione seems to think a little and soon she remembers it. Yes, you are, what was your name? Hemian asked. It's Ryan, Orion D. Ambrosius. And this here are my friends, Ron Weasley and Rose Potter, Orion said. Especially the last friend part, while looking at Rose. Only God knows that this girl needs some friends. Rose too at this had a big smile on her face. Orion just returned the smile. You are smiling a lot today, don't you? I wonder why? Merlin from the side added. Orion's smile immediately faltered. Do I have to suffer his remarks all my life now? Orion questions his life. Maybe, but if that were to be the case then I need a raise. Can't babysit you for free, you know, Merlin added. Orion just ignored that comment altogether. Hermione on the other side was already going on and on about Rose and how many books she read where Rose's name was mentioned. Orion was planning to stop Hermione, just like he did with Ron but at this time, someone else also entered the cabin. White hair with no bell-like clothes. Orion knew who this kid was. Malfoy, Ron almost spat out before Orion could even remember the name. Yes, it's Malfoy, Draco Malfoy, Orion remembered. Two more kids followed him, his lackey. Orion didn't remember the name and he doesn't care either. We heard that the Rose Potter is here, said Draco and Orion could not help but almost roll his eyes. He almost cut out all the nonsense until the conversation diverted a little from the movies and books and Draco called both himself and Hermione, Mudblood. That's not supposed to happen until we reach Hogwarts right? His eyes narrowed a little. Unlike Hermione who only knew by the reaction of Ron, that it's a bad word, Orion knew what exactly, it meant. Honestly, I don't even need magic to kick this bratty kid's ass. But should I? Do those words make me that mad? Orion thought and shook his head. So when both Ron and Draco were trading insults, Orion finally said calmly. It's fine Ron, it doesn't matter what those words mean. Just him saying those words doesn't mean that it's true. And you white hair, his fault for not introducing him, don't make things difficult. If you are done then go back to your cabin, Orion said, not wanting to deal more with Draco. Orion could practically see Draco was about to open his trash can mouth and spray garbage on him. Why not just kick his ass and throw him out, Merlin from the side said. Only Orion heard him but still, he was a little surprised. Strange thing for a grown-up and responsible man to say to a child. Orion questions with a questionary look. I am good but not an idiot, I know kids like this, they will keep coming back at you until they get a good beating. And it's not like you are doing anything much, just scare him, Merlin said. For some reason, he felt that Merlin was that uncle who was the source of the first bad influence on a child. While he was talking with Merlin, he didn't even see Draco sending all kinds of profanities at him and then even taking out his wand. Scare him, correct? Orion smiled internally. Before even Draco can turn the tip of the wand toward Ryan, Orion snatches the wand from his hand. With lightning fast reflexes, Draco's wands disappear and appear on Orion's hand which he turns around, putting it at Draco's neck. The speed of taking the wand from Draco's hand and putting him at the tip of his own wand was almost a blur to everyone in the train cabin. I don't usually care what people tell, especially brats like you who don't understand half of the time what they are doing, but actions are different. You pulled a wand on me, it's the same as pulling a gun or a sword in the mall world. So, tell me white hair, what should I do to you? Orion said with a menacing voice. Draco took his time processing what just happened but when he came to understand that someone was pointing a wand at him. It was like his system rebooted and then he realized that he has to be afraid. Orion held back his smile thanks to his accumency shield. The situation was pretty funny. Orion also noticed both Rose and Ron were impressed while Hermione was looking at him like he was a future rival. So, 
just like good little beasties, Draco and his lackey ran off. That was wicked, Ron said. Rose too nodded her head like a chicken pecking rise. Well, I guess now he won't bully you until you are strong enough to actually kick his ass, magically, Merlin winked. Orion at two turns around and winks at his three companions. Don't worry about what he said, he said. We are defined by our actions toward others. Not others actions toward us exclamation mark. Remember that Ryan said with a calm voice. Merlin at this raised his eyebrows in surprise. Couldn't have said it better myself, Merlin added. Chapter 10, Chapter 10, finally at Hogwarts. Soon the Hogwarts Express arrived at Hogsmeade. Ron, Rose, Hermione and Neville, who joined the group after Draco left, got ready and wore their uniforms. Orion too did it but he was not planning to go with them. He too wanted to experience the famous boat ride to Hogwarts but then considering that he might be marked with the ministry trace. He quickly changed his mind. So when his new friends were going out of the train cabin, he intentionally stayed back. Rather than getting out, he started walking towards the last compartment of the train. Red, Orion said after coming out of the train when no one was looking at him. He saw sixth and seventh year students gather in one place and hide quickly. Hogwarts Express is designed in a way that the older years sit at the back of the train, while the kids take the front compartments. That is how Hagrid can easily spot all the first years. When it comes to Hagrid, he notices him as well. Then he suddenly remembered that schools usually do roll calls. Shit, Orion almost cursed. This might be the right time to see how much I have progressed, Orion wonders. So then he focused on Hagrid, waiting for him to look at his place once. And soon he did although the distance was a little too much but still their eyes connected and Orion got the chance to use Legil Immensi on Hagrid. Now he is much better in Achilmancy, but for an unprotected mind like Hagrid's, it was not hard for Orion to read his mind. After all, in his free time, even before Professor McGonagall took him to the Diagon Alley, he was learning the mind arts with Merlin. So no, reading an unprotected mind was not hard for him. What was hard, was to make changes in others' minds. Even a minor change like tricking the mind in assuming an unimportant character like Orion is present in the roll call. Well, changing someone's thoughts is a very difficult thing and very few people know about it let alone those who can do it. Merlin teaches this to Orion because he has nothing other to teach him with his magic being so weak. You are too rigid, relax your mind, remember what I told you. It's about keeping up with your target's flow of thoughts, Merlin reminded Orion from the sidelines. Orion nodded and calmed down. He again unconsciously started his integration technique out of habit. Merlin was about to stop him but he noticed Ryan's focus skyrocketing suddenly and didn't do anything. Orion narrowed his eyes and then suddenly broke the contact. You did it, Merlin exclaimed with a little surprise. He too was not expecting Orion to pull it off in the first go. Orion smiled. Further away, Hagrid who suddenly felt that someone was watching also blinked at the same time. He who was looking a little further away in the darkness suddenly felt something was wrong but couldn't tell what exactly. He just shook his head and went back to roll call. That was brilliant Merlin said, the first time ever giving a compliment to Orion. Really? Orion asked in excitement. Yeah, what you did just now, took me decades to master. You might have that trick of yours to get stronger but that is not the real reason you will get strong my friend. You have an uncanny talent for the arcane arts. Something which even I didn't possess back then. Merlin said from the bottom of his heart. Maybe that little technique of Orion works in more ways than one, which neither he nor Orion understands. Red, Orion said once again after the other students went away with Hagrid. The blush from the praise was already gone. Being good at mind arts has its upsides. Due to the night, it was difficult to spot his flying friend but maybe it was magic, Red came to him. Gawk. Good boy, Orion smiled. He was not sure about his phoenix gender but out of habit, for his dog, whose name now he has given to the bird. He calls the phoenix, boy. Listen, I need to get to the entrance, can you fly me there, or better even, teleport me, Orion asked. He did try to teleport with his bird before. But Red is not as old and skilled as Fox. He always made mistakes in teleporting. Flying, however, is not an issue, and when considering that phoenix can carry an insane amount of weight. Orion was planning to fly to the entrance, rather than infiltrating into the ranks of older students. Cork, red chirps. Orion, still new to having a phoenix didn't understand what his friends were trying to say but he understood one thing. One of the two options is possible. 
so he just let Red choose. All right, I'm ready, Orion said, closing his eyes. Dash. At this time, a student who was sneaking much like Orion for some reason suddenly heard a loud chirp of the bird and looked back. The boy had green eyes and black hair, a very iconic feature in this world. He looked back, a little stunted at the sudden sounds and also the recognition of these sounds. He quickly hid, but after noticing that no one came, he slowly moved forward to find out what was going on. But the only thing he saw, was a flash of light caused by the sudden eruption of the flames and then there was nothing. Dash. When Orion opened his eyes, he found himself on top of a tree. He looked around and found the entrance right in front of his eyes. Well that is an improvement from what happened last time, Merlin chimed in. Oh, don't remind me that, Orion quickly said. He remembered the last time he tried it, he was teleported right in front of a couple having a sex. They were so engrossed in their private time that they didn't even see human-sized flames appear out of nowhere and then a boy standing there, admiring their flexibility. This life experience makes character, Merlin said with a rather nasty smile. Red too chuffed at that. I was this near, to losing all my character back then, Orion signed. So slowly he climbed down. Making sure that the boats are still yet to arrive. He then quickly hides, planning on appearing only when the first year are near. Hey, is the trace on me, can you sense anything abnormal? Orion thought, asking Merlin. I don't sense any magical difference, but some magics are undetectable so there is that. I will tell you a ritual later on to find out, Merlin slowly caressed his long beard which might rival even the lights of Dumbledore, and said. Good then, Orion slowly whispered and then waited. Dash. Did any of you see Orion, Rose couldn't help but ask. Orion by now was the only friend who showed her any care and didn't do it for her simply being the girl who lived. So, she looked around, not finding her first friend. She travelled there with Hermione, Ron and others. No, I never saw him in the roll call, Ron whispered. Maybe he got dragged by the older students, Neville added. But before others can talk more, Orion appeared and said. I'm here, sorry for the delay, I got a little lost. Rose blinked at that, she remembered not seeing Orion in any of the boats. Where were you? I looked all around and you were nowhere to be found, she asked with narrowed eyes. Why, do you miss me? Orion had his smile back got a little closer to Rose and asked. Rose immediately got flustered at this. Not having any friends meant she had never been teased like this before either and thus she had no composure. She blushed and didn't know how to respond. Ah kids, it's so easy to tease them. I will have an excellent year in this school, Orion smiled like a devil. But his smile faltered as Mr. Trash Can, aka White Hairs, aka Draco came back. He was about to open his mouth but looked at Orion staring at him. He stopped. Yeah, BTCH, now run along and remember to tell that to your father, Orion internally fist bumps. It's not very hard to scare an eleven year old. If you don't like then sue me, Orion sends a middle finger to the universe. Why are you smiling, Rose asked. Oh nothing, I just thought that you looked really cute when blushing, Orion said. Another critical hit. Another critical hit. More blushing, more blushing. Orion 2, Rose 0. Rose then just huffed and turned away her head. You sure are having? Merlin was about to say something but before that Professor McGonagall came. Come inside, she just said this and all the students followed her. Orion then entered into a big hall filled with floating stars and moving pictures. Movies didn't do justice to this castle, Orion truly was in awe. Only the sheer size of the hall was almost four times what he remembered in the movies. He and the other students eagerly looked around, trying to memorize all the little details of the room. And this is just a room. The entire castle is yet to be explored, Merlin had a knowing smile on his face. While Orion with other first-year students were admiring the giant magical hall, Finally, the sorting ceremony started. It was in the alphabetical order. Orion didn't remember much about the small side characters. Say, if you have a choice between Gryffindor and Ravenclaw, which one you will pick? Merlin asked Orion. This put Orion into thinking. He wanted to go for Ravenclaw but then considering how the majority of the main cast will be on the Gryffindor, he could not help but think again. Chapter 11, Chapter 11, Sorting Finally, the sorting ceremony begins. Orion didn't know many of the characters. He actually never read any of the books. His knowledge about the Harry Potter world all came from either the movies or the extensive amount of fan fiction he has read. Soon it was Hermione's turn to be sorted. 
there is a huge possibility that everything goes as canon but then again, it could go horribly wrong as well. As much as he has seen, this is not his typical Harry Potter world. Harry is a girl here. He has Merlin's ghost trailing him around to make him ready to fight the hidden boss, in the future. However, he still thinks that Merlin's ghost is nothing but his system but not telling Merlin that. But everything went just like in the canon and Hermione was sorted into Gryffindor in the end. That's good, Orion mutters slowly. Well, if I were you, then I would be more worried about where I want to go, Merlin added. Where do you want to go exactly? Now is the time to decide, Merlin asked. Don't worry, I have decided. If I have an option then I will choose Gryffindor, Orion said. After Hermione, a few more students came and then Ron's turn came. Gryffindor, shouted the sorting hat. It didn't even take a second for the hat to be decided. Rose Potter then suddenly Professor McGonagall announced the name which everyone was waiting for. Ah, her name changed and so the order her roll call. Now, it's just after Ron, interesting, Orion gave and I solved the mystery, look. Why do you even care about the roll call order, Merlin gave Orion a weird look. Orion pretended that he didn't hear Merlin. The hat was taking his merry time with Rose. Everyone was anxiously waiting for the outcome. But maybe none more than the two professors sitting behind the sorting ceremony. Orion was cautious not to look Dumbledore or Snape in the eye. They both are masterly gilliment. And although, his shields are strong and can stop them if they are not using their wand to directly attack his mind. But if he blocks them, then they will learn that he knows Achillu Mensi, making a target behind his back. Don't worry. Just rearrange the memories in a way that you put all the unimportant memories outside for others to read but the important ones are shielded, Merlin as usual gave his sage life advice. Easy for you to say, Orion grumbled under his breath. Someone beside him, heard him mumbling something about annoying over accomplished old man. Gryffindor, finally the verdict came out and Orion was happy. We got Potter, we got Potter, someone was shouting, Orion didn't give it much attention. Most of the things are at least still going as canon. Nick Hyun, McGonagall said. Orion was not interested in any other sorting except his own now, but when he looked at the boy in front of him, he suddenly got interested. Black hair, green eyes. And the face is somewhat similar to the Harry Potter from the books and the movies. HMM, what's going on here? Why a Harry Potter lookalike is here? Rose's brother? But he has a different name. Orion almost wanted to go to his mind palace and see the picture of Daniel Radcliffe to spot the difference. They are similar looking but not the same. If you look closely you will find many differences, Merlin pointed out. Slytherin, announced the sorting hat. Please remind me later that I have to dig into his background please, Orion said. I doubt that you'll need reminding but okay, Merlin just waved his hands. Orion wanted to see the looks of Snape as Nick Hyun's eyes were also similar to Rose's, aka Lily Potter's. He quickly took a sneak peek, and he was not disappointed at all. Snape looks like someone stole his formulae for the lustrous black hair he has. But before he went for Albus too many names Dumbledore, his name was called. Orion D. Ambrosius, Professor McGonagall announced. He saw, Ron, Hermione and Rose giving him a confident look, like he is destined to come to Gryffindor. He signed and walked forward, not making eye contact with the old man. The moment the hat touched his head, he heard. Ah, you have learned a Kilumensi. Strange how two amazing students suddenly show up with a Kilumensi in the same year, said the sorting hat. Two? Orion couldn't help but repeat inside his mind. Yes, the boy before you, had the Kilumensi shields. Maybe, even better than yours. Hat said and the more it says the more Merlin and Orion were getting suspicious about Nick Hyun's identity. Say, can you allow me to peek a little inside your mind? I need to sort you into a house you know, Hat was a little grumpy by the sounds of it. Just put me into Gryffindor, Orion replied. Oh but that will be an incorrect sorting, are you sure that you want to go to Gryffindor? Hat asked. Yes. Fine your, cool. Gryffindor finally the Hat announced. Orion noticed that his new friends cheering a lot from the Gryffindor table. He was about to remove the Hat but then suddenly he heard. Wait. Before leaving. Tell me what does that stand for? The hat asked. Orion was taken aback a little but then he quickly said. It's about a person who will carry the thousand years of history on his shoulders and bring liberation to the world. Orion had a smile telling this. Thank you Oda Sensei, he couldn't help but internally say. The hat looked confused but before he asked anything, McGonagall took the hat and Orion joined his friends at the Gryffindor table.
After some nonsense from the headmaster like telling kids not to go to a certain room on a certain floor, knowing fully that kids do exactly the opposite, the dinner finally started. After coming to this world, this was the first time, Orion had so many things to eat. He didn't hold back at all and so was the case with Rose. After that potion which Orion gave her, she was extremely hungry. Both Orion and Rose were almost devouring everything in front of them. Ron was not much better. The only person who was eating like a civilized person and pretending that she did not know this uncultured baboon was Hermione. I know that you are hungry but this is embarrassing, Merlin too looked embarrassed when no one except Orion could see him. Orion felt a little bad that Merlin couldn't eat this with him but then he remembered Merlin telling him that even before his death, he stopped eating and replenished himself with only magic. After thoroughly establishing that they are the number one foodie, Orion with his friends follow the prefects to the Gryphine or dorms. Of course, boys had different dorms than girls. Hermione then took Rose away and he was left with Neville and Ron. But before that, Professor McGonagall arrived to introduce herself as the house head or dean of the house. Not to mention, to set the rules early on. Orion just faded back in the background until night time. It's finally time? Merlin asked. Orion just nodded. Quietly he got up and slowly got out of the dorm. You sure the dim dim bell, Dumbledore, has not set up CCTV cameras here? Orion couldn't help but ask. Merlin just rolled his eyes at the mole remark and said. Hogwarts won't allow that. He can't trace anyone. He might be the greatest wizards of his time but he is nothing but a kid in front of the wizards of the past. The same wizards who built this castle and made sure that no one could just misuse the magic of the castle. But if he really uses CCTV like real CCTV then I'm not sure, Merlin said. So very helpful, Orion smiled and remarked. Slowly moving, without even the Lumos light he doesn't attract any attention from the ghosts. He made his way to the seventh floor. Thanks to him living in the forest, navigating in the dark is not that hard for him. The only problem was that he was not aware of the castle yet and took some time to find the stairs, even with Merlin's help. This, annoying stairs, which idiot thought that it was a good idea, Orion mumbled looking at the moving stairs with hatred. Yes, my reaction to them was also similar. It was Gryfind or who made them using ancient magic. A powerful magic use for this idiotic thing, Merlin couldn't help but sigh. But soon he found himself on the seventh floor, in front of a magical wall. It again took him some time to find this wall. It was much harder to find than the wall at King Cross Station. Orion quickly thought something three times and a room appeared in front of him. Bingo, Orion almost said that out loud. He quickly got inside. Twenty minutes later. I guess we are done, Orion left the room of requirements and said. Hide, someone is coming, Merlin said. Orion was taken aback. He couldn't hear a thing and his senses are best in the game. But he believes Merlin. Who the FCK is coming here at this time, Orion almost wanted to complain. Chapter 12, Chapter 12, Room of Requirements Orion when finally reached the seventh floor of the castle, looked around and with the help of Merlin found the Room of Requirements. He found the task much harder than just simply sensing the magic fluctuation as he did in the King Cross Station. By your memories, I can tell that the Room of Requirement was made by ancient magic. You have yet to learn this kind of magic and it will be harder to find. But I have an idea, Merlin said when Ryan couldn't find the exact wall where the room of requirement was supposed to be. What? Orion asked immediately. Not wanting to go around in front of every wall, and wish to open up three times in his mind. Use your integration technique, I have seen that your magical ability increases when you are performing the technique, Merlin had this doubt after Orion was able to interfere with Hagrid's mind in Hogsmeade Station. He was sure that the technique was much more than what both of them had realized. Okay, Orion not having any other alternatives just follows Merlin's suggestion. Lo and behold, the moment he entered into the integration stage he was able to sense a different magic fluctuation from a certain wall which was different than the entire castle. Awesome, Orion almost shouted out. There is much more to this technique than either of us know. We need to do more testing, Merlin said and Orion couldn't agree more to this. He quickly walks in front of the wall three times thinking for the room to open up and show him two things. Merlin naturally read what Ryan was thinking about. Even for some reason, Orion's Achillumency shields were ineffective against Merlin's ability to read his mind. That's actually quite smart of you, Merlin said with a little smile on his face. Of course, I planned everything before coming to Hogwarts, Orion said and entered the room. In front of him was an impressive room with two lost items. 
It was money and Rowena Ravenclaw's lost diadem. I was expecting that you would go after the diadem. Not only Riddle's Souls is a great source of magical power but the diadem itself contains ancient magic which you can integrate inside you. But the money really caught me off guard, Merlin honestly said. Ha ha, what can I say, as an orphan, I always was conscious of money. And considering just how long this school have stood here. There are bound to some rich young masters losing money and gold here and there. Now they are mine, my precious, Orion was honestly excited now and almost laughed out like Golem. He didn't even open the box where the diadem was supposed to be and started counting the coins first. Merlin didn't say too much. He knew that if there was one thing where he couldn't stop Orion then it was money. He has read his mind and the child in front of him has an extended plan to become rich in this world. He can't do anything but sigh. Dash. After a painstaking fifteen minutes. All right I'm done. A total of one hundred and so galleons if I add up all the nuts and sickles and convert them to galleons, Orion couldn't help but laugh out. One hundred galleons are nothing, don't start flying just with this much. Merlin intervene. Shush, let me live this moment, it's not often I get free money you know. Orion shut Merlin. Merlin just rolled his eyes. He for some reason was picturing a red crab who owns a restaurant and shouts money every day. Orion's memories sure are affecting him. After the insane domain rush settled down, he finally opened the box and looked at the beautiful piece of jewelry in front of him. Rowena Ravenclaw's diadem, Orion said to himself. But just when he was about to touch the diadem, he sensed the foul magic inside it. He immediately retracted his hand. Yes, this foul magic is surely a dark magic related to the soul. Merlin chipped in. It's powerful, Orion noticed when he finally observed the power of the diadem and couldn't help but say. Yes, it's powerful. And you are not strong enough to absorb this magic, as you are right now. Merlin said. Man, now what? Orion was planning to absorb the power and get stronger here. Just store the diadem with you in your pendant for the time being. When the time is right, you can just absorb it then, Merlin suggested. What, my pendant is a storage device, Orion heard of this, for the first time. Oh yes. I might have forgotten to tell you but you can store anything there and no magic will be able to detect it. Merlin responds. That's pretty cool, Orion said but his thoughts were going in different directions. Like breaking inside Gringotts and putting all that money in. Merlin naturally knew what Orion was thinking and wouldn't let Orion do something like that. He made a mental note. So after quickly learning how to use the pendant and storing the diadem and money inside, Orion comes to the last part of why he came here. Okay then. Let's do that ritual to find out whether I have the trace or not? Orion asked. Yeah, just follow my instructions, Merlin then told him the simple steps to the ritual. It was a very easy ritual, and he was done under just two minutes. Done and congratulations. You really avoided the trace. Merlin said with a smile. Awesome, Orion was truly happy. Now time to get out of here, Orion immediately stood and got out of the magical room but not before asking the room to give him some books about magic. He saw the room magically disappearing in front of him and was amazed. Ancient magic is pretty cool, Orion was in awe. Merlin senses something. Someone is coming, Merlin said. What? Who the FCK come here at this time, Orion shouted inside his mind. Quick, hide now, Merlin said. Although Orion wasn't able to hear anything even with his excellent senses, he believed Merlin and hid. Soon he noticed a boy of his height coming towards the room of requirement. His eyes narrowed. I have seen this guy before, Orion thought to himself. His face was not much visible. The lumos which he cast were making it hard to see his face with all those shadows forming. But soon he stopped in front of the room of requirement. And that's when Orion was able to see his face. That's Nick Hyan, Merlin said standing right in front of the boy, far away from where Orion was hiding. Good thing that only Orion can see or hear him. I knew that this guy was hiding something, Orion thought to himself. When Nick went inside the room of requirements, finally, Orion came. What do you think? Orion asked. Can't say but you better stay vigilant against him, being a person with a Kilumensi shields like the hat told. We just can't directly invade him to find out, and there is a high possibility that he also knows Lee Kilumensi. My best advice is to practice your Achillumensi hard from now on and while you are at Hogwarts. Use this time and absorb as much natural magic in the surroundings as you can, Merlin said and Orion too was thinking the same thing. He can't beat any of the kids when it comes to magic. His magic is very weak, 
and he has a sneaking suspicion that this Nick guy is stronger than any normal first year student. After that, Orion came back to his dorm. He wanted to find out why Nick knew about the room of requirement but he suppressed his curiosity. Dash. The next morning, Orion woke up early, his biological clock telling him to practice and exercise. Still following the rule of the jungle, survival of the fittest. So he freshened up and was ready to go out to do his daily exercise but Merlin stopped him. Don't bother about that right now, you can continue that later when you have a stronger magic. Now only focus on getting stronger magically. You know, something like all those pointless manga you used to read, about cultivation and breaking the multiverse with a fart. Do that, Merlin said with amusement. Orion felt embarrassed as his dark history was revealed. So after seeing that everyone from his dorm was sleeping, he directly went outside the castle. It was early morning around five o'clock. He felt the cold breeze but it was nothing, he was already used to living in the forest for a long time. Going towards the green grass, he sat down and started to meditate and activate his technique. This time he intended to draw all the natural magic in the air and draw it inside him. And the result was apparent. This time it was much easier to draw magic inside him, he could practically feel magic rushing inside him and at the same time getting out. Expanding his magical circuits and magical core. He usually used to have trouble doing this but now it was quite easy, maybe because his newly found magic core and the mana rich place as Hogwarts. This feeling was pretty addicting. Chapter 13, Chapter 13, First Day in Hogwarts. After an hour of intense magical training, Orion was all sweaty and tired. If not for the first day of Hogwarts then he was thinking about just going back to his dorm and sleeping there. Begrudgingly he dragged himself to the hall to get something to eat. It was breakfast time anyways. At least I don't have to hunt for food anymore, Orion internally cheered himself on. His body was not as tired as his mind. The technique causes intense mental exhaustion. And that has increased after he built his magic core. By the time he reached the hall, he saw many students and professors there. Most of the students he saw were from Ravenclaw. He looked around and noticed Hermione there. Just like her personality. She must have woke up early and started revising her note before the class started, Orion muttered under his breath and sat beside her. Good morning Hermione, Orion pushed his mental exhaustion away and said with a cheerful tone. Good morning Orion, you are early, do you often wake up at this time? Hermione asked. I know, I, Orion was about to say that he had woken way before but then considering Hermione's competitive nature he stopped. Yes, usually I do, Orion said and looked around. He saw Professor Sprout there. He was extremely hungry after his training and started devouring food in front of him much like yesterday. Hermione was giving him a nasty glare and so his deemed Professor McGonagall who later joined the hall. But he didn't care about them. A growling boy like me needs food, I can't be shy when eating, was his response to all the naysayers. Professor McGonagall didn't say anything, she knew that Orion lived almost half of his life alone in a forest. It's already a godsend that he is this civil. She planned to teach Mr. Ambrosius some basic ethics later on, she made a mental note about it. Orion on the other side suddenly felt a dotting feeling that he might be in trouble. After eating, Orion rushes to his dorms to get a bath and rush out for his first class. When he reached the dorm he found Ron still sleeping. So that's why they were late, Orion rolled his eyes, remembering Harry and Ron being late for the first class. Ron wake up. It's already time, if you are not up and ready under 10 minutes then you are gonna be late for the transfiguration class, Orion shouted but he never woke up. He grumbled, he really didn't want to share a room with Ron as he didn't have to. He planned to do something about this later. He tried a little more, like he even shaking them but no luck. Well, don't tell me that I didn't try later on, he huffed and quickly after taking a bath got out of the dorm. First year students have 8 subjects in total. Transfiguration charms. Potions. History of magic. Defense against the dark arts. Astronomy. Herbology. Flight. Unlike in the movies or the books, all the first years take the class together. Well, at least most of them. There are still some classes which are done with two houses together and not all four. Orion was sure that this had something to do with the number of students. The number of students admitted to Hogwarts is not enough to create a separate batch for each year. This is also how so less staff in Hogwarts can actually handle so many children. When Orion finally found the class, which took him quite some time, he saw students from all houses present there. But all of them were, no doubt, 
first-year students. He quickly looked around and noticed a ginger-haired girl sitting beside a red-haired girl. He also notices a cat sitting on top of the teacher's desk. Orion wanted to directly go and sit beside Rose and Hermione but before that, he went towards the cat. Can't help but wonder, how she done it right? Merlin asked with a smirk on his face. Orion did not say anything but just slightly nodded, not letting others catch his gesture. He slowly got close to the cat, it was still early and before the class was supposed to start. Slowly bend down, coming to the cat's eye level, even though he knew that the cat was McGonagall. You are waiting for Professor McGonagall too? Orion asked and gave his charming smile. He then took out two blueberries and showed them to the cat. Try it, they are pretty good, Orion said and left the blueberries on the desk if Professor McGonagall cared to eat it, and then went back and sat beside Rose. Hello ladies, how has been your day so far? Orion asked both Rose and Hermione. Hermione just rolled her eyes, she just met Orion in the break and she just didn't want to remember that. Good morning Orion, Rose however gave a pretty cheerful response. Where is Ron? Rose asked. Not finding one of her new friends. When I came, he was still sleeping. Maybe he will take some time before coming here, Orion gave a knowing smile. After a little casual talk with the girls, Orion looked around, trying to find anyone recognizable in the class. Neville was there and so was Susan, Draco with his two lackeys. But the person he was looking for was sitting at the back. Nick Hyan, Orion muttered to himself but didn't look back again, making sure that that guy doesn't realize that he is onto him. He is not looking that well if that face is anything to go by, Merlin said. Orion too nodded in silence. Nick had dark circles and looked very sleepy in class, even yawing sometimes. Soon the class started and Ron came in running like in the movies. Professor McGonagall turned back and surprised everyone in the room. Even Orion was surprised, not because of the transformation but because the blueberries were not there anymore. He acted as he didn't notice. Transfiguration is one of the most dangerous magic you all are going to learn in Hogwarts, and it is very essential for a witch or a wizard. You're going to need this subject to pass your OWLs as well as your NEWTs Professor McGonagall with a stern tone said and looked around to notice everyone. Today, we are not doing any magic, but rather learning the dangers of transfiguration, she said and then started writing something down on the boards. That is the basis of transfiguration. You better remember this, Merlin who again shrunk his size and sat at the corner of the desk reminded Ryan. Orion was already on it. In a nutshell, there are two types of change in the matter of substance. Transfiguration which is not permanent and transmutation where change is permanent. There was much more but the majority of it was just Professor McGonagall scaring the little wizards and witches. While this talk was going on, Orion was frequently looking around like he was not interested in the talk but in reality, his eyes always stayed a little longer on one Slytherin boy sitting at the back of the class. That will be all for today's class, your homework will be to write about the dangers of transfiguration, McGonagall said and left. That was anticlimactic, I was honestly expecting her to do some magic, Rose said. Yeah, I understand, I wanted to see more magic myself, Orion too nodded at this. By the way Hermione, what are you writing so furiously there, Orion asked looking at her notes. I have written down all the possible dangers that Professor McGonagall stated in the class and will be including in my homework, Hermione said. Both Rose and Orion at this just nodded their heads. Yeah, what the next class Rose, Orion asked. It's defense against dark arts, Rose who had the schedule on her hands said. Cool, let go then, Orion said and dragged the entire golden trio with him. Dash. Nick Hine was having a bad day today. No, saying that he was having a bad day would be an understatement. He was having a terrible day. First, I turned into this and now some bloody idiot stole the diadem, Nick almost cursed out. Yesterday night when he went to the room of requirements, he planned to do all the necessary ritual to get stronger and even get the Ravenclaw's diadem from the room of requirement. But there was nothing. Diadem was not there. He thought that the room was unable to find the diadem as his request was complex thus he asked the room to bring every simple thing lost in the castle. And because simple spells like Axio would not work, he had to spend almost the entire night searching through all the lost items in the school. But no luck he couldn't find the diadem. Not only the diadem was not there but he also found out that his worthless body was not strong enough to handle the ritual. I need to find who took the diadem? Nick thought to himself and gritted his teeth. Chapter 14, Chapter 14, First Day in Hogwarts 2
One more time, Mr. Ambrosius. Professor Flitwick said after seeing that Orion was having a hard time casting a simple Lumos charm. Orion nodded and focused his intent on his wand with the correct wand movement and spell pronunciation. Professor Flitwick was not giving much attention to the class right now. He was more interested in Orion. The reason is that he was the first student to successfully cast the Lumos charm, even beating the perfect student like Hermione. But the light itself was extremely weak. Orion casts the charm with little difficulty but having less magic means that gathering magic to cast this charm takes a little time. Flitwick narrowed his eyes. It was a little hard to notice the small light on the tip of Orion's wand in a brightly lit classroom. Strange this is the first time I am facing an issue like this, Flitwick internally muttered. He knew what was going on here. This phenomenon is very common when a student tries to cast a powerful magic and doesn't have enough magical power to perform the spell. Mr. Ambrosius are you sure that you are? Flitwick stopped what he was doing when he noticed Orion's hands shaking slightly and even his eyes a little red. He would be an idiot if he thought that Orion was not giving his all. It was the opposite Orion was pushing himself to the utmost limit to perform this spell. A frown appeared on his face which soon was dismissed. Good, Mr. Ambrosius. Gryffindor two points, Flitwick said and moved away to teach other students. Orion finally sighed and went back to the book he was reading. What was that? Ron and Rose both asked at the same time. Noticing Orion's hands shaking and even sweat appearing on his face. Nothing. Maybe he was wondering why my lumos is so dim, Orion didn't bother to explain. Oh, but I might know, Draco who was sitting all the way away from the Gryffindor side spoke up. Orion had an urge to roll his yes but he didn't. He just looked at Draco expecting more but trash coming out of his mouth. But that was just him acting, the real person he was looking at was Nick who was also watching him and had a sneer on his face. At Draco's jab, others were also a little curious. This mud blood here has so weak magic that even a simple spell like Lumos, he can't do properly, Malfoy said and immediately was reprimanded by Professor Flitwick. Orion was more amazed that this racist bigot even knew what exactly going on. Well there might be a little brain hidden there somewhere, Merlin smirked. He didn't do anything, there is no point in bringing more attention towards himself when he really is weak. That's outright stupid. But he is no saint and every offense towards him will be paid with interest. It's just that right now is not the time. Dash. Don't think too much about Draco's words, Orion. Magical power can increase when a wizard or witch becomes an adult, I have read about it, Hermione said with concern in her eyes. Apparently, she too knew why Orion's spell was weak, she sure is smart. Yeah, you are not weak at all, Rose added and Ron nodded in confirmation. Orion at this couldn't help but smile at his cute little friends, there might be five five year mental gap between him and his friends but he still never considers them as kids, surely something to do with his physical age being eleven. Oi looked at me, do you see a face which needs to hear those things, Orion said with an amused face. All three of them took a hard look and then shook their heads. Exactly, I might lack some magical power right now but that doesn't mean I am down and out. If I am weak right now then I just have to become stronger. And when it comes to Draco, always remember that those who belittle others much are just insecure in their own life, Orion said and kept on walking. Both Harry and Rose processed and then smiled. Hermione on the other hand kept up with Orion, seeing that he was going to the library. Dash. Coming to the library, Orion looked around for the book which he wanted to get from the room of requirement but overnight the book disappeared. It's most likely that the book itself was a copy created by the room and overnight the magic ran out, Merlin said and Orion too agreed with him. His thoughts were also in the same line. That book is not here tough, Orion mutters. There exists a damn place in this great temple of magic my young Badawan and it's called the restricted section. And honestly, you don't need that book on ancient runes, Merlin said. If not then how I am supposed to learn ancient runes, Orion asked. Merlin at this gave an amused look. They didn't use to call me the Prince of Enchanters for nothing you know. I doubt there is anyone who is better than me when it comes to ancient magic and runes, Merlin boasted. This leads Orion to wonder why didn't he ask Merlin like he usually does. So he took out a book to just fool others and also a quill and paper to write down all the runes and their uses which Merlin told him. By evening time, Orion was totally exhausted. It took him three hours to complete just writing down all the runes and their uses. His head was already spinning thanks to cramming a semester's worth of knowledge in his head under just three hours. Not to mention, the knowledge he got from Merlin was better than anything he could find anywhere. It's totally complete and profound. 
but what he really did was to learn a programming language and how to use it. Just like how programming works. There is a lot of practice involved here. You should rest, you are pushing your mind too much. First with that training of yours and then using my memorizing spell to remember all this, Merlin said like he was not asking but ordering. Orion too was lightheaded by now. So he finally stood up, just wanting to rest now. Orion, are you alright, what happened to you? Rose asked when Orion arrived in the dining hall. Ah nothing, I was just learning something that's all, Orion said with a smile. He looked around and noticed both Hermione and Ron also giving him a worried gaze. Look guys, I am fine, just tired a little that's all, Orion said and started eating. Only God knows he needs energy right now. But maybe more than that he needed rest. If Orion wasn't totally exhausted at this point then he would have noticed the strange look he was getting from the professor's seat. But as Orion was right now, he didn't even look up and talk with his friends, just devoured every bit of food in front of him and went back to sleep early. Chapter 15 Chapter 15 Potions and Snape I can't go on like this, I felt like an intern who doesn't even get anything to eat let alone salary, yesterday. Merlin we need to do something about it, Orion woke up and ranted about his problems. It seems that performing his integration technique with his daily studies took an additional toll on him. And maybe he overexerted himself yesterday to learn the runes but that doesn't mean he can't see the real problem here. Okay okay, I get it. The problem is that even with your amazing mental fortitude, you are getting extreme mental fatigue if you continue to study and keep using your integration to increase your magic, Merlin, at last, got annoyed with Orion and said to stop him. I know that, but I'm asking if there is a way to lessen my mental fatigue, Orion asked while getting ready to go and do his magic training again. Well there is one way. There is this one potion which can reduce mental fatigue for you, Merlin suggested. There are other ways as well but all of those need more magical power to implement. Brilliant, it just happens to be that today we have potions class, Orion perked up at this and went to his training. Dash. After hungrily devouring his food like always, Orion went out to find the necessary materials to make his potion. His idea was pretty simple, complete whatever assessment Snape gives him and then use the rest of the time to prepare for his potion. And while he is at it, he might get a few tips from Snape. So, with that said, he went to the potions class with Ron, Rose, and Hermione. Of course, he prepares all the possible ingredients he can for the potion beforehand. The potions class is one of the classes which Gryffindor have to share with Slytherin. Meaning the moment he entered the class he noticed many Slytherin students there. <laughs> Snape is not here, I guess it's the right time to get started with the prep work for our refreshment potion, Merlin said. According to him, this was his own recipe and he never gave his potion a name. He used to use this potion or at least a higher variant of this whenever he was studying magic. What is all this, Rose asked with confusion on her face. She and this case is much like Harry from the canon. Not much interested in anything except flying. But apparently, she was a little interested in the potions considering that Orion gave her one and it was doing wonders for the poor girl. It was making her cheek rosy and nurturing her body. She was already feeling pretty energetic. I'm gonna make a special potion which can reduce mental fatigue and while I'm at it, I will make the same potion I gave you, you will need more, Orion just explained his entire plan and even told why he was acting like that yesterday. Rose who heard that Orion was making potion for her immediately brightened up and was even a little shy. Hermione from the sideline heard this and her eyes were shining already. Something which can let her study for more hours. There is no way she is missing out on this. Ron though, was just uninterested. Oh see who we have here, a half squib, came the voice and Orion's good mood immediately faltered. One of these days, I'm gonna break this guy's face, Orion looked at the ugly mutt face of one Draco Malfoy. Leave him alone Malfoy, Rose sends a threatening glare at Malfoy. Malfoy looked like he was about to retort but before that with a bang, the door of the classroom opened and Snape came in. There will be no foolish wand waving or silly incantations in this class. As such, I don't expect many of you to appreciate the subtle science and exact art that is potion making. However, for those select few, Snape came in with all his style and said with a low tone, but for some reason, everyone was able to hear him. At the end of the sentence, he looked at Draco. You possess, the predisposition. I can teach you how to bewitch the mind and ensnare the senses. I can tell you how to bottle fame, brew glory, and even put a stopper in death. He said and there was extreme silence in the class. Unlike Harry, Rose was paying full attention in class and there was no reason to directly target her. 
I believe that Rose here will have better luck with Snape here than the Canon Harry. She looked too much like her mother, Orion thought. And the estimation was right as Snape was looking at Rose with strange eyes. He didn't say anything for a second but then snapped towards Orion. Mr. Ambrosius, may I ask why you have so many ingredients here with you, Snape asked. Yes, I brought all of this to make some body and mind nourishment potions, Orion said, a little surprised seeing that Snape even remembered his name. Maybe the fact that he is a half-squib became popular among the professors. Well, it's not his fault now it is. He was a squib just a few months ago. He doesn't have all those years to naturally increase his magical power like most of the kids here. Body and mind nourishment potion you say, Snape asked in disdain. Not at all believing that a first year student from no particular background like Orion can brew a potion let alone two. Not to mention, most of the teachers are aware of Orion's background. The fact that he lives alone in the forest doesn't give Snape much confidence in Orion. Perhaps Mr. Ambrosius thinks that making potion is similar to cooking soup by gathering enough eatable materials and throwing them inside a pot, Snape said, and slithering students giggled at this. Was it really that funny, I didn't find it that funny, Orion genuinely asked Merlin. Nah, they just need a reason to laugh, they are kids, what you expect, was Merlin's response. Orion agrees with Merlin and doesn't respond to Snape's obvious jab. But being a potter, Rose just had to open her mouth. He can make potions. He even gave me one which helped give nutrients to my body, Rose said glaring at Snape. Snape looked at Rose and then at Orion. Only he knew what he was thinking. Then, Orion felt it. A mental prompt. This bastard is using legal immensity on me, Orion was about to tighten his shields instinctively but then Merlin said. Give him access to those memories. Shield other memories. Merlin said. Orion by now has already sorted out all of his memories and put everything out for the open which is not important while shielding only the important memories. So he just let Snape see the memories which he wanted. Chapter 16, Chapter 16, Potions and Snape 2. Snape loved Lily. He never told this to anyone besides when begging in front of the Dark Lord and Dumbledore. One killed the only woman he ever loved while the other let it happen. The sorrow of this weighed down on Snape much more than anyone ever expected. So when he learned that Lily had a daughter, he was elated. Remember when Rose Potter first entered Hogwarts, he practically saw Lily in her, smiling at him. It was a small mercy that nobody noticed his behavior then. But that doesn't mean that Snape totally forgot that James Potter was her father. He was relieved to notice that Rose was more like Lily than James Potter. After though, when he came out of his musing he realized just how much fragile she really was. He wanted to go to Dumbledore and ask just what kind of environment she grew up in but refrained from doing so. He knew that he was not going to get an answer anyway, he didn't do that. He when the time was right searched her mind. And it was infuriating. Those muzz were infuriating. He had half the mind to visit them in his free time. But before that, he planned to make some potions and send them to her. But here he finds, this boy has already done it. At first, he was worried that whatever he gave Rose was not a potion but something else entirely. Maybe Orion D. Ambrosius is not a student here but a spy from the Dark Lord. Trying to get closer to Rose. He was not sure and thus invaded the boy's mind. He got the information easy enough, and he was surprised. Orion really did live in a forest all alone all by himself. And the potion he gave to Rose too was self-created. Although it was not as effective as any other tested potion but the boy has to be a potions genius to come up with something totally new by himself. He also notices why the boy created this for himself. To improve his weak body. Snape now really was not sure what to say. He was a little grateful to the boy for helping out Rose at least. Snape didn't say anything for some time, trying to read more of Orion's memories. Dash. Orion on the other hand senses that Snape is dangerously getting slower to his mental shields, and intervenes. Professor Snape, are you okay? Orion asked waving his hands in front of Snake, breaking the eye contact. Snape jerked a little when he exited Orion's memories. Never suspected that Orion knew a Kilumensi, not with that pathetic level of magic power. Ambrosius, tell me, what would I get if I added powdered root of asphodel to an infusion of wormwood? Snape asked. He actually prepared this question for Rose, showing regret for Lily in his own twisted way but he ended up asking this to Orion. Orion who had remembered pretty much all the movies, thanks to Merlin and his memory spell, immediately answered. A sleeping potion so powerful that it is called the draft of the living death, Orion answered with full confidence. 
Hermione who had her hands shot up, looked a little disappointed. But Snape was not done yet. And where would you look if I ask you to find a bazaar? Snape asked. That's a stone which we get from a goat if I remember right then mostly likely on its stomach, Orion acted like he couldn't remember all the answers correctly but answered the question nonetheless. And what's the difference between Monkshood and Wolfspun, Snape continued. Both are the same plants, are they called A.C.O. Aconite yeah yeah. Correctively they are called Aconite, Orion said nodding. Acting like he had a hard time remembering. Snape on the other hand just sneer. He knew that Orion was acting, he could read his surface thoughts. He read that he was doing it so that Hermione on the side wouldn't get competitive with him. But then he didn't say anything more, except this. Those potions, I would like to see it. Orion's eyes widened a little but he didn't react much. He was about to make the potion anyway so why not? After that, the class really started. Two partners joined to make one potion. Meaning, that one cauldron was free. Orion decided to start both the potion at the same time. So he will be making the potion which Snape asked them to in Rose Cauldron while he will be making the body nourishment potion in another. He already has have made that potion before and it wasn't much harder to handle two cauldrons at the same time. He then explains the entire process to Rose and even improves the potion where it is needed with the help of Merlin. You know, considering just how much helpful I am to you, I should really get paid, Merlin joked. Well, I agree but what you will do with money anyways. Not to mention. I got none, Orion said shamelessly. He got around 100 galleons before but never mentioned that. Merlin just rolled his eyes and didn't say anything more. Snape who was giving special attention to Rose and Orion also noticed both of them working on two potions at the same time. He didn't say much, because he noticed Orion was guiding Rose well. In fact, Orion first planned out his entire workplace and even arranged the materials. This brought a little smirk to Snape's face. He knew that Orion clearly knew what he was doing. Although he will never tell others he was a little impressed with the way Orion handled the ingredients and brewing. After just twenty minutes, three potions were done. Orion and Rose completed two while Nick who was on the side completed his. Snape checked all of them and he was impressed. Nick's potion was excellent. No problems with it. Slither in five points, Snape gave the point immediately after seeing the potion. Snape had a strange feeling about Nick because his eyes resembled Lily's a lot. Snape didn't believe in coincidence but here he too just baffled, something about Nick just rubbed him the wrong way. So he sends a legal immensely prompt inside Nick's head. But he was rebounded back. A little startled he looked at Nick with a little surprise. Nick too at this realized that he made a mistake. But none of them did anything after that. The potion rose and Orion blue was not as effective as Nick but it was passable. Sadly they didn't get any points. But then comes the body nourishment potion by Orion. Snape looked at it and frowned. He was observing Orion when he was making this potion on the side. In fact, it was he who asked Orion to show this potion to him. This is unrefined work at best, Snape sneers. Yes, I came up with this recipe in a jungle. It's not very potent, but it's easy to make and doesn't require much expensive materials, Orion said, accepting the facts. Snape then took out a book and handed it over to Orion. If you are not as dunderhead as most students which I teach then you might learn something from this. At least fix that horrible thing you called potion, Snape said. Orion did not react but Rose was angry. She was felt the effect of this potion firsthand, and knew how impressive it was. She was about to say something but Orion grabbed her hand and dragged her back to the their table. Don't think too much about it. As long as something works, it doesn't matter what others think. Remember this simple mantra to live a peaceful life. Orion said and Rose at this wanted to deny him but then looked at Orion's smile and just huffed. For her, the potion Orion gave her was the best. But Orion already started to work on his last potion. This was the potion he wanted to work on in the first place, the mind-nourishing potion. I'm still in need of assistance. If I may ask, will you help me, my lady, Orion said with a little cheek. Rose too at this just sighed and helped out Orion. Snape when notices that Orion is making another potion, remembers that Orion did say that he want to make two potions. So he kept an eye on them. But now he had more than one target he was interested in, Orion and one slice lie therein. Chapter 17, Chapter 17, Title at the End Orion knew that he would be facing this situation but it was still annoying. What? Can't say anything. Can you now mud blood? Draco said while his two lackeys, whose name he still doesn't know, held him down. 
it started after he left the potions class. It took him longer than expected to make the mind-nourishing potion. Long enough that he had to convince Rose to go ahead of time and he will catch up. He made more just in case Snape asked for it, which was the case. Apparently, Snape looked a little stunned when he got the potion in hand. Strangely enough, he gave Ryan another book about potions. Ryan just chucked that into Snape being impressed with him. When he asked about the potion itself, Orion described how this potion was supposed to relieve mental fatigue. So, after giving Snape a little bit of mind nourishment potion, for testing purposes of course. He finally rushed outside to meet his friends. And that is when he found these idiots. It started with a simple insult, which Ryan didn't even bother to acknowledge. Then Draco like previously, pulled his wand on Orion. But just like before, Orion snatched the wand from him. And from there on this went downhill for him. This time around they were not as scared and stood their ground. They want to see whether Orion attacks them or not. There is no way for Orion to attack them, and before he can try to think about a way out, a stunner comes towards him to knock him back. Shit, Orion muttered to himself. This followed a leg-locking charm and then both the supporting characters pounded on him. What, I asked you something. What happened, Draco said while putting his wand on Orion's neck. These brats are getting on my nerves now, Orion said. Yes, I too don't understand how come the wizarding world came to this. There used to be a time when magic was considered as a gift, a power to save others and bring prosperity. Merlin was about to continue when he noticed Draco holding Orion by his neck. Orion never loses his eye contact. He was searching, or trying to search for anything useful which he could use against Draco in his mind, but then he noticed that he couldn't enter into his mind, like something was stopping him. His ring, it's an air's ring which is blocking your liege element attack, Merlin said. How do I break it, Orion asked straight in point. You can't, it needs much more power than you have right now, Merlin said. God damn it, Orion mutters under his breath. He still had one way to handle this situation but. Forget it, internal integration will burn away the small amount of magic you have right now. Then you can say bye bye to being the wizard king, Merlin reminded him. I know that old man. Tell me how to handle these guys, Orion asked with a little agitation as a defindo hit him, cutting his cheek slightly. Well in this case you can just take the beating like a man, Merlin said, while leaning on his staff. Yeah that was very helpful thanks, Orion cursed. Dash. Orion, what happened to you, Rose and Hermione asked at the same time. Orion was pretty bang up. Cut and bruises. But all of them were magical attacks rather than physical attacks. Nothing just met a wild dog, Orion said in sarcasm. What you met that dog too, Ron asked. Orion at this got a little confused but with a slight mind reading he learned what Ron was thinking. I am talking about Malfoy, what are you talking about, Orion asked knowing that it was about Hagrid's three-headed dog, Fluffy. This leads Orion to tell his entire encounter with Malfoy while Ron tells what he and both Hermione and Rose saw in the restricted section. This also raised anger towards the Slytherin trio from the Golden Trio. Don't worry guys, he started this with me, it's only natural that I will be the one to end it, stay out of it, it's my fight, Orion said with a tone of finality. This makes all three of them nod but with some hesitancy. So, why did you want to meet me here? Orion asked. Oh nothing, we wanted to invite you to play with us, Rose said. Don't add me among you, I wanted to invite Orion to the library. Hermione said. Oh, so nice of you but I have to deny both of you, I have something important to do, so maybe another time, Orion replied. Oh okay, Ron and Rose immediately dejected while Hermione just huffed and walked to the library. Don't worry, I will make this up to you guys, I know just the thing, Orion said and went away. Later he spent all the time working on runes and trying to form a usable rune circuit. Dash. Later that night, Orion found himself in front of the Room of Requirements again. He made sure that there was no one following him and that there were no inlying traps and spells here after Nick visited the place. All right Merlin hit me, Orion said. Oh I would love to but I can't touch anything, Merlin replied nonchalantly. I mean tell me a solution to my powerlessness, Orion replied annoyingly. Train, keep practicing and eat your veggies, Merlin added with a smile. Orion's eyes twitch at this. Anything more useful, he asked. Don't miss leg days, Merlin thought and said. Ah quit it already, give me something. You saw what happened to me earlier, what if that defindo was cast at my neck? I was done for, Orion almost shouted. Malfoy won't do that, 
You know that. He is a coward, Merlin said trying to calm Orion. Yeah, but what if it was someone else? What if it was Voldemort or that guy Nick? I am even not sure who he is besides that he looks a little like Harry Potter from the movies, Orion said. This made Merlin think but in the end, he still shrugged his shoulders. Sorry son, you are asking the wrong person. If it was a magic related issue then I could have helped you. But right now your magic is so weak that I don't have any solution for you, Merlin said honestly. Orion too at this visibly deflated. Orion up to this point has only learned three spells, the mind arts and runes. Even after knocking his brain many times, he couldn't find a way to defend himself with just this. But then he suddenly thought of something. Runes Hyrion mutters to himself internally. And at the same time Merlin too looked at him with a grin. I know what you can do. Now it will take some training but it can save your life, Merlin said. Orion who just got an idea thought about it. Well, depending on which one is faster to implement, I better apply that while keeping the other one as a reserve, Orion muttered to himself. At least you won't be beaten like this next time, Merlin said. There won't be a next time, title. Chapter 18, Chapter 18, Flying Lesson It's almost been a week since Orion came to Hogwarts and he had to admit that he is avoiding all the social side of being in Hogwarts and being a kid, for his training. So when he saw that he had flying classes today, he was excited. Hey sea letters are here, someone said and Orion looked up. He saw many owls and birds bringing letters for the students. I still don't understand. Even after having magic and all this time to find a better solution, why these fools are still relying on these birds to converse with each other. Even mulls are better than them at this point, Merlin said with irritation in his voice. Orion just smiled and replied in his mind. Yes, and they will keep on getting better. You have already seen what they can achieve just after thirty years from this point. Soon or later the mulls are going to leave this stagnant magical world behind, Orion said and there was a smile on his face. And may I ask why you are so happy about it, Merlin asked but he had a sneaking suspicion that this capitalistic bastard was thinking about how to make a profit from it. Why shouldn't I? Only I have the knowledge, resources and vision to move this stagnant wizarding world forward. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna be rich. Orion replies as if nothing can stop that future from happening. Merlin still didn't like the fact that his only student was too attached to materialistic things but he liked where he was going with this. Truly the magical world, especially Britain is very stagnant and needs to be moved by someone. And who is the better person than Orion D. Ambrosius, his disciple? Orion watches everyone getting their letters and suddenly feels like he is a little homesick. He never had parents in his previous life but he had many friends. He honestly misses them. He was about to lower his head and focus entirely on destroying the mountain of food in front of him but suddenly he saw flames appearing in the side of the hall. Everyone's attention was attracted towards this, even some of the professors as they too ate there. Even Dumbledore was there. Everyone saw a phoenix appearing out of nowhere, but unlike everyone who thought that it was the headmaster's phoenix as everyone knew he had won, this phoenix went towards Orion. Red, Orion after seeing this smiled and called out his friend. Red too directly went towards Orion with something wrapped in his leg. Orion noticed that it was a letter from Tom the owner of Leaky Cauldron. He stayed there for some time and even helped out. Apparently, Tom remembers to write something to him. There was a smile on his face. The letter was nothing much but still put a smile on his face. But unlike him, people around him were surprised. There was a phoenix sitting on his shoulder at this time. You have a phoenix, Hermione was the first one to open her mouth. Mate that wicked, Ron added with amazement. Rose didn't say much, in fact, she didn't even recognize the mythical bird but still slightly patted it. Thanks, boy, here take this and I will write to Tom later so make sure that you are around to send the letter, Orion said and gave some self-made nutrient sweets to Red. Yes Red likes sweets, deal with it. While Orion was in his musing, the entire hall was looking at the phoenix at his shoulders. But none more than one of the four most essential characters. Quirrell or Voldemort to be exact, Snape, Nick, and Dumbledore. Dumbledore in fact did hear from McGonagall that one of the first years had a phoenix and he wanted to see it. He wanted to go there and see the phoenix but before that the launch time ended and everyone was gone from there. Dash. After eating, Orion with his friends who kept on asking him questions about phoenix went for the flying class. It was pretty similar to the books and movies. Professor Hooch came and let everyone in a line. Only Gryffindor and Slytherin were taking his class together as this subject needed more attention from the professor and more space in general. Now put your hands on top of the wand and say up, Professor Hooch guided. 
Orion did just that and unlike his or anyone else's expectation, the broom directly shot at his hand with ridiculous speed. Mother Orion almost let out a scream. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you, you need to handle your intent with magical items, which have their own magical power and don't require yours. Well, currently, you use at least ten times more intent than anyone else to do anything, Merlin said with a nasty smile. Orion are you alright, Rose and Ron who were beside him asked. They too saw how fast the broom was back then. Yeah yeah, I am okay, no worries, Orion gritted his teeth and said. It took some time before everyone got their brooms in their hands. All right, mount your brooms and slowly leap up when I give the signal, Professor Hooch said. Everyone did so, Orion on the other hand was now too reluctant to make any sudden movements. He was taking things slowly, but the universe didn't wait for him. Neville's broom went out of control and sent him flying away. Mr. Longbottom, come here right now, Hooch said. Yeah like saying that gonna help, Merlin from the sideline rolled his eyes. Orion was about to fly off to save Neville but before that, he noticed Red flying around and immediately called out. Red, Orion shouted and pointed towards Neville, hoping that his phoenix could understand what he was trying to say. People around him also heard him and looked away from the out-of-controlled Neville and spotted the insanely fast approaching Red Bird in the air. Cork, Red chirped and dived down from the height. Neville who was getting slammed at the roof by this point lost his balance and finally fell down. Orion from his place also got ready. He had never ridden a boom before but he was ready to take a little leap of fate. But just before he could do that, Red appeared with flames on his trail and snatched Neville who was almost about to hit the ground. Awesome, Orion shouted as he relaxed after seeing this. Other students and Professor Hooch visibly relax but are still stunned by how breathtaking Red was just now. He was so fast that he caught the falling Neville from that height. Red though just came closer to the ground and released poor Neville, making him groan, and then he flew and sat on Orion's shoulder with a chirp. As if demanding a reward for saving the fat boy. Orion just sends an apologetic smile towards Neville before giving Red some more of those tasty sweets he made. Chapter 19, Chapter 19, Food and Assignment After Professor Hooch took Neville, only then did Orion return to his flying test. He slowly pushes his legs, making him float slightly, but the problem was immediately apparent to him. The brooms are made in a way that they can make a witch or wizard fly without much magical power. But that is not true. In reality, these brooms do take magic from the riders. But only a minuscule amount. Considering your current magical power. You might be able to fly but not for long. And it might completely exhaust you, Merlin added after watching the brooms for a long time. I am not that interested in brooms anyway. I personally believe that they are a little dim. There could be so many other ways to fly and wizards had to use brooms of all things, Orion replied. But this made Merlin give him a strange look. What? Orion couldn't help but ask the Gandalf ripoff. In any other case, it wouldn't have mattered but considering that you are learning about runes. I believe you should be interested in why the wizards are using a broom out of all the things to fly. In fact, I believe that I have found the very first assignment for you. I want you to study a broom and understand how it works. Not only that, use the knowledge you have about the runes and improve it. You have until Christmas. When school reopen later, I will be asking about this assignment to you, Merlin said with a knowing smile. Orion groaned a little at this, more homework, was his only response. But he too now was intrigued. There must be a reason why Merlin asked this from him. He might want to acquire a broom of his own to start testing. Maybe, he can look at some broken ones. Studying the broom is not a problem for him. In fact, he had half the mind to get into wand law himself. Bearing in mind that he will need to make a wand for himself in future. But it's not half bad to start with brooms. The real trouble comes from improving a broom. And he knew what exactly improving means. Merlin wanted him to improve a broom or outright make a new one which even he who has magical power corresponding to a five-year-old can use. And while he is at it, he might even test out making some more cool gadgets. Why not? While he was thinking and musing to himself, he saw Malfoy getting Neville's remembrance and Rose, just like Harry in the canon, chased after him. Some things are just unavoidable I guess, Orion couldn't help but smile after seeing a familiar scene. He couldn't help but show envy towards Rose. She had this innate powerful magic from the start. However, he shouldn't envy her, considering this cost her everything else in her life and also will lose much later in life. Besides, Orion too has his own cheat and it's just about time before he surpasses everyone. He literally has the power to take away magic from everyone, 
in theory, he can become the only person on earth with magic. The absolute ruler and god. But he never planned to do that. Back to Rose though, he was a little curious whether the innate power she had was really something she got from Voldemort or she was born with it. Soon Rose catches Neville's remembrance and everyone starts cheering for her. And just like in the books and movies, Professor McGonagall just happens to be looking outside of her office when Rose did all her mid-air stunts. A.K.A., a direct entry to the team and a position to being the youngest seeker. Dash. Orion after the entire day's toil, finally remembers that he promised his friends that he would make up to them for not being able to play with them. So before the dinner time, he makes his way towards the kitchen. There are hardly any witches or wizards who come to the kitchen of Hogwarts. The entire operation is handled by the house elves. When he came, he was a little stunned to see almost a dozen house elves cooking the meal for later that night. When he saw Orion, they almost looked elated. Welcoming him like he is royalty. Okay, I was not expecting that, Orion mutters to himself. Then what were you expecting? House elves treat their master like kings and gods. There is nothing to be amazed about in it, Merlin stated quite the matter of factly. Well, I guess, that is the case, Orion thought to himself. Hey, provide me with some ingredients and a stove. I will be making around ten people's worth of food, Orion said with a grim. Dash. Orion told the house elves to replicate the recipe of the ramen noodles he made and serve anyone who asked for it in the dining hall. And for his friends, well they will get it even if they don't want to. He is quite confident in his cooking skills. Being an orphan teaches you a lot and cooking skills are a very important skill to have for anyone, let alone an orphan. What is this? Rose asked Orion. It's called Raymond Noodles. I made them specially for you all. Try them, Orion sends thumps up towards his other friends to go these noodles. Dash. Minus ten minutes later. This is brilliant, Rose said with her mouth still chewing on the noodles. Hermione already knew what noodles were but this was the first time she was eating them and she loved them. And so was the case with the Weasley brothers. In fact, their reaction led other students to also ask for the noodles. And when a large number of students eat the noodles, the noise finally reaches the teachers. What is this all noise about? Snape sneered and asked. Oh Severus, you should try this dish which Mr. Ambrosius made. You gonna love it, Flitwick couldn't help but beam and talk show the noodles he was eating. Snape explored his surroundings and saw even Dumbledore eating the noodles with chow. Only a few professors actually tried the dish but they love it. Snape when hearing Oyan's name, remembered that Ryan was acting like he was cooking back when he was making potions and frowned. Although his potions were excellent yet acting like a mull cook for a potion maker is demeaning. But when he actually tasted the noodles he realized why Ryan might be acting like that. The kid had talent in cooking, no matter whether it was potions or mull food. Even other professors praised Oyan silently when they tried the noodles. Chapter 20 Chapter 20, Broom, Map and Change Making food for his friends was not only a way to say that he was remorseful that he wasn't spending more time with them but also a strategy. He wanted to get his hands on some broken brooms and the Marauder's maps. Former, for Merlin's assignment which he gave Ryan. Although Orion has the money to purchase himself a cheap broom why when he can get himself one for free? He gonna broke down the broom anyhow so it doesn't matter if the broom he gets is broken from the start. Later, because he sneaks around the castle. He needs to trace the movements of some important key figures like Snape, Quirrell, Dumbledore, and Nick. Especially Nick considering that he knew about the Room of Requirement. At this moment, Orion is using the room for various things and he doesn't want to run into Nick. So Orion, after the dinner was done, approached Professor McGonagall. Why you are here Mr. Ambrosius? Professor McGonagall asked. Orion knew that he couldn't tell that he was learning runes. It was a third year subject and that two only basic forms of runes. What he was learning from Merlin was even more complex than the master's level according to wizarding standards. There are benefits of having the greatest wizard of all time teach him after all. Professor, I had a request. I was wondering whether I could get a broom from the school to study. Even a broken one is fine. I wanted to learn how it flies, Orion said with a straight face. Her answer here decided whether he spend money on a broom, which he might never ride in the future, or not. But the even more important thing is time. If he had to purchase the broom then he could only do it at Christmas time and then he would have had only a few days at best to test out the broom. He might be able to learn white brooms are the only object wizards use to fly but he can't improve them. McGonagall looked at Orion with a little suspicion. She naturally knew that Orion suffered from magic deficiency, 
If any other student had asked her for this then she would have either directly denied them or would have done her own investigation to find out why exactly the student needs a broom. After all, why suddenly do students need brooms besides flying around and causing mayhem? But in the case of Orion, she couldn't tell why. After thinking some more she decided to give the broom to him. The reason why the first year are not allowed to have their own brooms is because they are the most prone to get injured. They, unlike other students, have no formal training in flying. Well at least most of them don't as most wizarding families do teach their young ones how to fly. Orion after hearing McGonagall smiled in delight. I expect that you don't cause trouble with this Mr. Ambrosius, the professor said and Ryan just nodded. The next target was the Marauder's map. He was not sure where it was exactly. In the books and movies, it was with the twins but it appear in the third year. So to find this out, he ended up visiting the twins in their free time, making sure that no adult and Nick were around. Asking them about any artifact which can help him track someone in the school. Then just ended up reading their mind. My mind reading is broken if not all legal and are good at mind reading so effortlessly but Orion thanks to his insane talent and step by step help from Merlin was already a master at it. But only when he is reading an unprotected mind. He doesn't have the power to break into a protected mind yet. Unfortunately, he didn't find anything on the twins. So after thinking about it, Orion thought just why not try to find it in the room of requirement? If the map was created by the marauders and then got lost. Then it's most likely will be still in the castle and every lost thing in the castle can be summoned by the room of requirement. Dash. So Orion on that night, with the broom which McGonagall gave him, went to the room of requirement. Didn't you ever wonder how come you have such a good vision at night, Merlin asked while Orion was waiting for the moving stairs to come. Magic, Orion just said sagely. No idiot, magic can improve the vision to some extent but that doesn't happen on its own. You need to have good control of your magic and knowledge to enhance your body like that, Merlin said rolling his eyes. Maybe I am just used to the dark. Living in the forest for this long, anyone can adapt to the darkness and be able to find their way in the dark, Orion said not thinking too much about it. Possible, but I have a better theory. I believe that when you get the power from that vampire, you also get a few of his traits like smell or being able to see in the dark. After all, your senses are stronger than before are they not? It's much better than what you had before fighting that vampire. Because you were weak for some time after beating that vampire and forming your mana core. You didn't notice this before. And even after that you just chuck it up as a normal thing after having magic or drinking all those potions. Didn't you, Merlin said with a knowing look. Yum yes, I mean that was the most obvious reason, Orion who never thought about it suddenly fell into contemplation. He had noticed that his senses were getting better, great eyesight and smell fast reaction time. His snatching a wand from Malfoy's hands is a good example. He didn't see any changes in his speed or physical power but that always used to be good after he started practicing integration. But there is definitely an improvement in his senses and reaction speed. I believe that this is something which we need to test out in future. You might not realize it but what you have just accomplished is usually only possible by a very complicated ritual. And all rituals of this nature demand sacrifice of some sort. Unlike you who just walks around in the dark thinking that he can see at night because he lived in the forest for few years, whilst not paying any damn thing in return as a sacrifice, Merlin said but his looks were not normal at all. He strangely looked excited and Orion realized how broken this is. He swallows and focuses his mind. He makes a mental note to test himself out. More than the improvements, he was worried about getting bad traits like being hungry for blood like a vampire affecting him. Or having an animalistic nature. I don't think that you need to worry about that. Remember this technique, integration converts all energy into positive energy for you. Just like how you don't get any negative energy from the technique. I doubt that you will get any negative traits from the creatures you absorb either, Merlin said and Orion relaxed a little. But he's still gonna test out anyway for his mental peace. It's better that he knows, there is a possibility that he can turn into a homicidal killer before that really happens. Dash. By the time he reached the room of requirement, his first order was to get the Marauder's map. Fortunately, the room really brought the map to him. He looked at the map and found his targets. Dumbledore was asleep. But it was not the case with Snape and Quirrell. Both were at each other's tails. He also found Nick and couldn't help but double-check it. He was in front of the girls' washroom. That's the bloody chamber of secrets, Orion said out loud. He also noticed Nick's name disappearing from the map as he entered the chamber. 
I had a very bad feeling about this guy, Orion said. Merlin on the side also nodded. Chapter 21, Chapter 21, Ancient Magic and the History of Magic. Both Orion and Merlin were getting more curious about Nick Iron. Although they know that this is an alternative world and not exactly Harry Potter from the books and movies but still. Someone who looks surprisingly like Harry appearing and even knowing where the Chamber of Secrets and Room of Requirement are is troubling. Orion after pondering about this matter for a few seconds just shook his head. There is no point thinking about it right now. Even if that person is the original Harry Potter from the canon or Thanos reincarnated after turning into dust in the endgame. Orion has nothing to do with him, not like he can stop him even if he is a bad guy. Right now he can't even stop some slither and bullies. Right now his goal should be just getting strong. Today he came here to practice learning more about runes and figure out what exactly made a broom fly. So he immediately started his work. The first stop will be to observe the broom to find out how it holds magic. He knows at least this much that this broom holds the magic of their own. It's mostly multiple witch or wizard magic. In other words, use the magic which a wizard puts inside the broom efficiently and focus it on floating and flying. But that is just him assuming things. He after finding nothing interesting on the outside of the old broom, started getting deeper. He had all the tools to break apart the broom and see what was inside. McGonagall already gave him a defective broom to begin with so there is no pressure on him about destroying the magical tool. So, after ten minutes of hammering and tearing apart, Orion finally found what exactly made a broom float in the first place. He was right in his assumption that a broom holds its own kind of magic which allows it to convert the magic of a witch or a wizard into floating magic. He looked at the complex runic array built inside the small hollow part of the broom. Thanks to Merlin's teaching him about runes and runic arrays. He has a very good understanding of what this array is about. At this time Merlin suddenly speaks. Remember that not all brooms will necessarily have a runic array like this one. There are many different ways to achieve a certain result. This one is just done with the help of a runic array. But this is a pretty old broom. I believe that new brooms are the work of direct charm and intention, Merlin said. Although Merlin tells Orion that he will not help him in this assignment, he can't let Orion's thinking get stuck to only runes or just one application of magic because of his inexperience. Orion after hearing this nodded. It's just like you said, the modern methods taking over the ancient style, Orion remembers what Merlin said about the ancient magical system and modern magical system. Yes, and here is a question for you. Which do you think is better? The modern style which uses just a spell or combination of spells with intent mixed into it or the ancient style with this runic array, Merlin asked with a knowing smile on his face. Orion after thinking about it finally said. For short term purpose or ease of use, the modern method is good. The problem is that that kind of broom will not last long. There is a possibility that their magic will run out in just under a century or maybe in just a few decades. Not to mention. They are not as efficient in using the magical power as this one, Orion said after pointing towards the broken broom in front of him. Yes those are the negatives, what are the positives then, Merlin asked. Simple, modern style is easy to use. Broom makers can make five brooms with modern style at the same time they make one when using the ancient style, Orion said. So do you think that modern style is better, Merlin asked. No, although harder, ancient style gives us more control over the magic. By just looking at this broom here, I can tell that it's easily 400 to 500 years old. This runic rape preserves this broom's condition for a long time. A magic which can last for such a long time is surely no inferior to modern magic, Orion said. Good, meaning you were listening to my explanations. And this might be the best time for me to explain what is the real difference between modern magic style and ancient magic style to you, Merlin said and Orion was ready with pen and paper to write down any important point. Cough cough. Let's start with what magic is. Magic is the chaos which brings changes to reality. This strange power was a gift from the higher beings to the lower beings. This happened many many years ago at the dawn of history, well before men even started walking on two legs. These lower beings later passed this gift to many magical animals and even some humans. The first humans who got this gift became somewhat similar to demigods and spirits. In fact, you can consider them as purer bloods. The real pure bloods, or you can call them the royal blood to identify them later. Fortunately, there are none left in the current earth, otherwise, they could have become the gods of the world. Animals which got this gift of chaos later passed on their bloodline for many years, their line still remains in many magical animals. 
Later humans, not related to the royal bloods mind you, started forming packs with these lesser magical creatures. And almost the entire line of wizards and magical we see today came from there. Merlin said and waited for this much knowledge to get digested first. This is also a reason why wizards nowadays have similar magical cores as magical animals. Those who form this blood pack could be considered pure blood. But their descendants now are nothing more than a mere shadow of what their ancestors were. Some of the wizards who were able to break these shackles of blood weakening and chaos in their blood dying out in recent times are Dumbledore, Grindelwald, and Voldemort. Even in the past, there were wizards who did it like the founders. Everyone achieves this status in their own way. Like Voldemort used many dark rituals etc. This level can be called Nachmage or Grandmaster. Remember when I told you the different levels among the magicians? Merlin said and finally asked the question. Yes, Grandmaster is level 5 according to what you told me, Orion replied. Exactly, usually level 4 master or mage is the limit of what normal witches and wizards can achieve in his world with just hard work and talent. To achieve the status of an Archmage or Grandmaster, one must find their own path, to increase their magic to that level. This never used to be the case in the past, however. In the past the magical power was in abundance, maybe not close to what it used to be when the higher being and lesser beings used to stay on this earth but still it was much better than what is the case today. There are two very important events that happened in the world which destroyed the natural magic of this world. First was the great collapse which made the higher beings and lesser beings leave the earth. And then there is the second collapse, which destroyed the last remaining natural source of magic from the face of the earth. In fact, the second collapse happened quite recently, only a thousand years ago. This led many of the real pure blood to die and contempt the world to slowly use up all the remaining magic until magic permanently extinct from the world. Merlin said and waited a little. On Orion's side, this all information was new and pretty interesting. But he caught the last words Merlin and started to connect the reason why Merlin said that the wizarding kind is getting weaker. It was the lack of magical power. The last remaining magic in this world is like a natural resource which wizards are digging out, exhausting. I will surely explain more about the ancient times but not right now, just understand that magic deficiency is the reason why even reaching the level of a grandmaster in magic is so hard in the modern era. Above that is level 6 and 7 and maybe even more which I don't know. But that we will discuss later. Let's start with the modern system. As you have already seen the modern system is pretty easy, even a child with no magical knowledge can do magic after learning a few hand movements with his or her wand and getting a spell. But the problem with this system is how bare bones it is. Remember that magic is nothing but a witch or wizards communicating with the chaos inside them to bring forth changes or impact in the real world. How big of an impact you can bring defines the power of the wizards but how efficiently you can bring that impact defines how well you can communicate with that chaos. Expressing to your chaotic power, what exactly you want to do is magic. Wizards for a long time have used numerous things to achieve this like making spells, hand movements, and using a wand, you name it. It's just like having compatible and feature-rich software is essential to fully take advantage of powerful hardware. Like the games you used to play. A controller can give you a good command of a car but a car handle will be always better. And that's what the modern system lacks. You can only so much define what you want to do, to your magic with intent and simple words. To do anything more complex or use the power you have more efficiently, you need a more complex language to communicate with the magic. And that is what ancient magic is. Why do you think that I was said to be the greatest wizard of all time? I was strong no doubt about it but they never say the strongest wizard. They say the greatest wizard. This is because of my command to make my magic work exactly how I wanted it to. You will be learning more about ancient magic from me soon. Once you have the right command then you don't need a spell to do something. You can directly tell magic what you want and magic will do it for you. You want to form a raising gun like that ninja anime you like to watch. You can do that. You want to fly in the air without any broom like a superman. Sure why not? You can even leave this world entirely and go to another dimension. Merlin said and Orion was practically drooling by this point. He immediately wanted to learn ancient magic but Merlin won't teach him. Saying that he needs more magic first, stronger magic before ancient magic. Don't be impatient, I will teach you when the time is right. And remember what I have to teach you is just my own learning about magic. I don't want you to just follow my path. To really follow magic, you need to make your own path. Level 7 was my limit back then. That level is very close to what those royal blood I told you before achieve. 
but that was my limit. You have to find your own limit on this scale, my friend, Merlin lastly said and left to Ryan and readers with what is yet to come. Knowing one thing if there is anyone who can surpass him then it's Orion. Chapter 22, Chapter 22, Harmless Genius After the history lesson, there was hardly any way that Orion could sleep. The entire night he ended up thinking about the two great collapses and those godly beings Merlin talked about. And above anything, he was thinking about that ancient magic he talked about. In the end, he couldn't sleep at all and when he got up the next morning, he had dark circles under his eyes. He still did his regular magical training and for the first time after stressing out his mind when he was learning the runes with Merlin, Orion was feeling exhausted. Good thing that I have this nourishment potion, Orion could not help but say to himself. While moving through the big castle he heard someone talking. You filthy mudblood. Oh I know whose that voice is, Merlin chuckled. No you don't, you recognized him because that idiot was only born with two patented dialogue options. Mudblood and my father will hear about this, Orion just trolled his eyes. He was just gonna avoid Malfoy altogether but curiosity kills the cat. He went to see what going on nonetheless, and the person he saw Draco bullying this time around was none other than a certain know-it-all. -all. Oh he has now crossed the line, Orion said. You can just avoid this by bringing a teacher you know, Merlin signed already knowing the outcome. Never. That Mother Earth could can beat me but I will not let him bully my childhood waifu, Orion said, switching from talking into his mind to actually talking. You are just overacting, Merlin rolled his eyes. Oh, tell that to those Hermione fandom and waifu lovers, Orion said. You are acting like a simp, Merlin knew that these words would bring a reaction from him. No, I am not, saving a girl is a chivalry, Orion retorted. You will save her if you just bring a teacher here, Merlin repeated. You are still too naive old friend, who said I am just doing this for the girl. Got a personal vendetta against Malfoy, Orion said. Merlin at this signed at the hopeless case in front of him. Dash. Who told you to pick a fight with Malfoy? Hermione glared at Orion and punched him lightly on the side. Ouch, Hermione it still hurts, Orion said. Of course it does. That is what you get for picking a fight which you can't win, Hermione said. But he was bullying you, Orion said. At this Hermione who was glaring at Orion turned her head. Yeah thanks for that, she said while not even looking at his face. After Orion rushes towards Malfoy and his two idiot friends, he directly stands in front of Hermione staring right at Malfoy. She was almost on the verge of crying, but before he could even say anything, Malfoy drew his wand towards Orion. It's strange how they didn't even need words before the entire talking phase was skipped unknown to both of them, like their instincts telling them that talking is pointless. That was a good punch, Hermione said after a while. Thanks, Orion said. He looked at Merlin next and said internally. Told you that there will be no next time, Orion had a smile on his face even after getting struck with three first level hex. And many will be asking why he is smiling. Well because he delivered a nasty punch on Draco's face, breaking his nose before he was bombarded by the hex. You didn't have to do that you know, Hermione said. Nonsense. This idiot will take a cruzio for his waifu, don't you my young friend, Merlin took the advance of the situation and sent a sarcastic remark. Orion just ignored the remark and looked at Hermione, instantly thinking of a cool line to say. Kicking bullies butts and saving a friend is essential for man's growth, especially when the said friend is a cute girl, Orion said. While the obvious blush appears on Hermione's face. Another remark from Merlin didn't let Orion enjoy the feedback of his teasing to Hermione. Of course, a man of culture like Orion here will never let that happen, Merlin said offhandedly. Orion just groans internally. Dash. Orion was currently thinking about a way to improve the flying broom. He had already tried many combinations and some of them even worked. While the prototype he created is better than the broom which McGonagall gave him they are nothing better than what is available in the market right now. Mr. Ambrosius, may I ask why you are not trying to change the much into a needle, Professor McGonagall asked. I already did it, Orion said and pointed towards his desk. McGonagall didn't see anything at first and was about to scold Orion but then something caught her eyes. She narrowed her eyes and noticed a very small hair. No, that's a needle, she could not help but feel amazed. I couldn't transform the match so I ended up cutting the match and taking out a small wooden strip, Orion said and shrugged. It's not like he can't do it but it will be difficult to gather all that magic from his weak core. He just didn't want to waste that much energy and went back to thinking about a solution for the flying broom. McGonagall was amazed though. 
Yeah, transfigurating smaller objects is always easier but in the case of Orion, it does make sense. She was amazed that he did it. Poor kids suffer from magic deficiency. So she wasn't planning to scold him if he couldn't do the transfiguration but when she noticed that he was not even trying. This made her act. Soon Orion's body will reach adulthood and his magic will increase. Then this kind of lesson will be useful. If he is not learning this basic thing right now then it will be very hard for him later on. But when McGonagall saw the hair size needle, she was amazed that not only Orion did it on his first try but he was even able to put designs on the small needles. Now she was thinking more in the line of what Orion could have done if only he had more magic. There is no doubt that Orion is a genius. She has heard Snape talking about the two potions Orion created all on his own. Snape is especially taken by surprise by the mind nourishment potion. She knows that Snape wants to know how to make it, but his pride is stopping him from asking a student. Now this small needle with intrigued designs on it. She felt a pang of guilt for not being able to help Ryan here. He could have such a bright future in front of him if only he had more magic. She asks this to Dumbledore but even Dumbledore is helpless. Besides some dangerous rituals, there is no proper way to increase one's magic besides constant practice and age. Magic is like a muscle. It becomes stronger the more we practice. And it's almost like the mind. It grows stronger as the older a wizard gets. Much like wisdom comes with age. Five points to Gryffindor, McGonagall said and with a pitiful look on his face, left. Orion hardly cared about the looks he was getting from others. Today it's pity and mockery. Tomorrow it will be respect and fear. For the time being he gonna just play the role of a harmless genius. He was about to go back to his thinking but then suddenly he asked a question. Professor, do you know why wizards use brooms to fly and not other objects like let's say a carpet or a metal object like a metal chair, Orion asked. Chapter 23, Chapter 23, Woods and Books. Wood. McGonagall explains why wood is the best material for magic. The reason why both wands and brooms are not made of any other material besides wood is that they are not a good conductor of magic. In fact, it's very similar to many energies on the planet, like metals like iron or copper being a good conductor of electricity. Magic is quite similar in this regard. And this is also a reason why enchanting something like iron is so hard. Surprisingly or not, gold is a really good conductor of magic and thus can be used to make some really useful items. The most stable and widely available good conductor of magic which can last for a long time is wood. So with that, the idea of using any other material besides wood for the broom was out. Orion then decided to finally start creating his own runic array which can work on wood and will be better than other brooms. So he decided to dedicate some time of his day to work on that. He needs to test out different styles of wood to figure out which works the best. Dash. Remember, the nice wrist movement we were practicing. Swing and flick. Professor Flitwick said. This was again a joint class with Gryffindor and Slytherin. Orion never understood why this school put these two houses together most of the time. Orion taking out his wand concentrated on the feather in front of him. He has already been absorbing magical power in Hogwarts for more than a month. So he finally gave it a try. He already had learned the spell so the power was the only thing which was holding him back. Wingardium Leviosa, he said with proper movements. Nothing happened, but he didn't give up. He put more power, and soon his hand started shaking. What happened, too much for you mud blood, was written on a piece of paper which came from the slither inside. Orion didn't even give a second look and went back to his spell work. More power. Need more power, Merlin said while looking at Orion's trying to lift the feather. It's kind of amazing how much intent you are putting out here. At its peak, your powerful intent is hundreds of times stronger than most wizards. I have no doubt that you have the most powerful intent and willpower compared to anyone else, Merlin admired. Yeah, but what the point if I can't even lift a damn feather, Orion complained and put more pressure on his magic. Okay then let me put it this way. If you had the same power as let's say Ron or Hermione here. Then you could have lifted that feather even without a wand. Remember intent, spells and wands are all the devices which us wizards use to give direction to magic, tell it what to do and bring efficiency or focus to the execution of magic, Merlin said sagely but Orion who had heard this many times by now didn't even pay any attention to him. He almost feels lightheaded by this point but hard work often pays off. Slowly the feather lifted, and Professor Flitwick was paying special attention to Orion. He saw the child execute the spell flawlessly. He could feel the magic and the powerful intent behind the magic. 
the child was not the first one to make the feather fly. But Flitwick was still interested in Orion as other professors had told him that he was a genius. He noticed the boy's entire body was looking a little pale by the end of it and there was a little blood trail from his nose which he hurried clean. He wanted to send him directly to the infirmary by this point but after seeing his eyes, Flitwick didn't do that. Because he saw the acknowledgement of his own success in his eyes. The half-goblin professor couldn't help but smile a little and add two points of Gryffindor. If only he had more magic, such a shame, Flitwick couldn't help but shake his head a little. Dash. After the class, Orion didn't attend the defense against the dark art class. He immediately needed his body and mind nourishment potion. Not like Dada class is anything important anyway. You might need a hobby besides magic. You are putting too much pressure on your body in this last month, Merlin said. I guess you are right. What should I do though? Any ideas, Orion honestly never planned to get a hobby in the first place. He was just playing along with Merlin so that the old man would let him alone. Trying writing a book, Merlin said without even thinking. A book, Orion repeated, asking why suddenly he would suggest something like this. Think about it, this world has long lost thousands of years of history about magic. It pains me to see the world falling like this. I know that you are so much interested in the broom assignment not only because I told you to do it but rather because you want to make money out of it. That's why you are so intended to improve the brooms, Merlin said and Orion at this just gave a bashful blush. With all the knowledge you have and will get from me in future, trading that knowledge could make you money and at the same time this will also help the magical world, Merlin said. For Orion, this was not the only time that he had thought of something like this. But he worries that his knowledge will be used by the dark side of the magical world. Voldemort is just one of the threats in the magical world. The Harry Potter books and movies are very focused on just one side of the world. It's not even a world but rather a school. The reality is much more different. There are already stronger witches and wizards than Dumbledore and Voldemort out there somewhere. We just don't know where they exist. There are other races out there which are hiding in the shadows, something stopping them from acting and claiming the world for their own. Only after coming to Hogwarts and talking with Merlin, did Orion realize that. I know what you are thinking, knowledge is power and I agree with your thought that there will be people who will use this knowledge in their bad intentions. But there are also good people out there, think about them and not like I am asking you to give them all the knowledge. Hold back the knowledge, only give enough that it will make others in the magical world either ask for more or search for themselves. In fact, I rather say that only give them the foundation at best. Merlin said and Orion started thinking about it. He was never a genius or a manipulative person back in his life. He was just a common teenager with common fears. Then how much do you think we should give them? Orion asked. Maybe all the less dangerous knowledge that he had. Less than 2%, Merlin said. This immediately made Orion look at Merlin. 2%, that is like not giving them anything, Orion said. Ha ha ha, what do you know my young friend? I might be nothing more than a spirit or a memory but if I have something to give then it's knowledge. I have not even started teaching you anything. Consider what I have taught you about magic till now being nothing more than Roger's last words which started an era. Let me tell you, that 2% of knowledge makes an ordinary wizard more powerful than even Dumbledore and that is barely the foundation. Merlin for the first time talked with arrogance in his voice. Acting truly like the god of magic as this world portrays him. Let's say that what you say is true. If that is the case, tell me why would I want to make more wizards like Dumbledore who can dominate an entire century? Ask Orion with a little gulp and hesitation. Domination only happens when the difference in the status of power is too large. What you will be doing is not making a dark lord or a master manipulator but rather empowering an entire new generation of magicians to grow stronger. Merlin replied and Orion thought about it. Fine, then let the world know the true arcane. And if any problems come afterwards, well, I will deal with it, Orion said with determination. Chapter 24, Chapter 24, Troll in the Dungeon. Idiot, stupid, Barker. How can you forget this? Orion muttered to himself, nagging his carelessness and ran across the hallway. Both Rose and Ron watch him zoom through the hallway in surprise. The speed was almost similar to a professional athlete. Dash. Minus fifteen minutes before. Orion decided that he would write a book. He immediately ran to his dorm took out a pen and paper and wrote down all the points he wanted to include in the book. It took him the entire afternoon to create the right framework and outline for his book. 
he had to back and forth discuss with Merlin about the contents of the book and all the possible information he should and shouldn't share in it. For someone else, this might be pretty exhausting considering what kind of stressful routine Orion was following before. This was rather a down time which he so much wanted. Later when he was done with the outline of the book, he wanted to go to the library and read some books to understand what kind of writing style the people in the wizarding world like. But didn't have much time left from dinner and accompanied both Rose and Ron to the dining hall. Just like usual, many students were eating there. Honestly, he never liked eating there in the open with others. He was not used to it. In his previous life, after leaving the orphanage, he mostly stayed alone. And even in this life he ran away from the orphanage and stayed alone in the forest. So it was bothering him to share a table with others. He was even aware that his table manners were atrocious. And he notices others giving him a look whenever he is eating. What happened? You are not eating much today, Rose asked in a little surprise, not expecting Orion to suddenly gain some table manners. I am just trying to follow some table manners, Orion said with a shrug not wanting to talk about it. He looked around and noticed that today the food had many varieties in it. He also observed that the entire hall was decorated today. Hey, is today some kind of festival? Why suddenly all the decorations? Orion asked Rose. Today is Halloween, Rose said with a smile, clearly happy that one of her male friends is at least willing to adopt some table manners. She then noticed Ron who was stuffing food in his mouth like a hamster. Halloween, Orion mutters and tries to remember something. He had a premonition that he was forgetting something. When he couldn't just recall, he entered into his mind palace and started going through all the memories of his. Especially everything related to Harry Potter's first year in Hogwarts. Merlin who watched Ryan doing it had a smile, clearly pleased with his students' excellent command of the mind arts. While the entire hall was buzzing with students and noise, Orion's eyes snapped open, food already forgotten, he looked left and right, trying to find a certain know-it-all. While Orion was internally panicking for Hermione, Merlin also started looking around but he was searching for a certain irregular boy. Just as he thought, Nick Iron was not there and this made him more suspicious about his identity. He too thanks to Orion's memories knew the plot of Harry Potter and there was no one like Nick there. It was like Nick Iron just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. He had his own speculations about his identity and if his suspicions are correct then Nick Iron has to die as soon as possible. Dash. Everything from that point onwards was pretty similar to the Harry Potter books and the movies. Quirrell came and announced that there was a troll in the dungeon. Everyone panics and Albus too many names Dumbledore, like the idiot he is, orders all students to be escorted back to their dorm. Why send them out there when the dining hall is perfectly safe? Where is Hermione? Orion asked Rose, Ron and the other students. He was careless, today Professor Flitwick taught them the levitation charm. It was this class where Ron badmouthed her and she ended up crying and not joining the rest of us in the dining hall. I don't know, Rose said, others were also the same. Orion pursed his lips and after not getting any info on her location he remembered about the Marauder's map. So, he ran out of the Gryffindor line, rushing past everyone, he takes the map out of his pocket. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. Frantically searching for Hermione's name, he finds her pretty easily. She was in the exact place as in the canon, good thing that Orion was already running towards that direction. Orion was fast, quite fast for his age. Thanks to his physique being stronger than anyone else, he was able to reach the girls' washroom in time. Rose and Ron were on his trail. How come he is so fast? Ron asked but his tone was complaining. Rose on the other hand was more worried for Hermione this time round. This version of Harry Potter is a girl, her friendship with Hermione is better than her friendship with Ron. In fact, she didn't realize that she only hung around Ron, who clearly wanted to be friends with Rose because she was the girl who lived, because of Ryan. She wanted to be with Ryan, who genuinely helped her, rather than Ron who was just there for her fame. By the time they arrived near the girls' washroom, they noticed a huge green giant moving towards the girls' washroom. Both of them looked at each other and followed the troll. Dash. Ryan and the Golden Trio were not the only ones who were out for a night walk. Nick Iron was also a person who never went back to the Slytherin dorms. The first chance he got, he left the Slytherin line and went on his own way. But unknown to him, someone was following him. He swiftly makes his way towards the third floor corridor, unknown that someone was on his trail. Alahamra, with a quick unlocking spell the door was unlocked. But Nick didn't go inside directly. He first peeks inside, trying to see something. Damn, a hushed whisper came from him. 
He was so quiet that no one heard him. Why Hagrid kept this kind of beast was beyond me, Nick thought to himself after watching Fluffy inside. He took out his wand and conjured an instrument quickly. Fluffy who was guarding the underground gate, immediately felt the effect of the music and started to fall asleep. He was about to go inside but then noticed a ward placed on the entrance. The moment he enters this room, whoever placed this ward will know. He couldn't help but groan a little in irritation. Taking out his wand, he tried to take down the ward but it was too strong for him to take it down. He knew that if he couldn't remove it correctly then his being here would be known to whoever set up this ward. And that whoever is most likely Dumbledore. Damn it, he was never a ward breaker. He doesn't have much knowledge about this. He first needs to figure out a way to break this ward. Other things can wait for later. First the diadem and now this, Nick let out a frustrated sigh. Chapter 25, Chapter 25, Troll in the Dungeon 2 Merry Christmas everyone, enjoy the chapter little bigger chapter for you all. 30. When Orion finally arrived in the girls washroom. He took a sign after not seeing any green monsters trying to eat little girls. His hearing was so good that he instantly spotted where the muffles were coming from. Knock knock. Who's there? Hermione who was about to wash her tear-stained face and go back to her dorm, asked after hearing the knocks. It's Ryan, I came to take you back to the dorms, Orion said, trying to hurry. Maybe the troll is not in the washroom right now but that doesn't have to be the case forever. He can come at any time. Why you are here, this is a girl's washroom. Hermione asked with confusion and a little hope. She was here because Ron called her know-it-all. He said that this is why, she has no friends. But there is Rose and Ryan. She just realized this right now when Orion came. Previously she was so clouded in her mind that she couldn't think of them. 1. Because I missed annoying you in the dinner hall. It's fun eating while you make that strange face at me. And second, there is a goddamn troll coming our way so, hurry up, Orion said and almost shouted the last part. Not wanting to waste more time. Hermione was more confused now but overall she came out after hearing Orion sounding anxious. Slowly opening the door she peeks outside like a cute five-year-old Nala and asks. What do you mean a troll? Hermione asked but at this time she saw a shadow outside of the washroom. Her eyes widen, Orion also follows the eyes and notices a giant shadow outside of the washroom gate. That's what I am talking about, Orion said taking out his wand. Uh, and he almost dropped it after hearing Hermione's scream only a few inches apart from himself. You might live this day, but I can't say about that your ears, Merlin on the side mused. Orion just sent a nasty look at Merlin and then shifted his focus back on the troll. The troll was big, bigger than Hagrid, and Hagrid was the biggest person he had ever seen. Weighing up to a ton, trolls have enormous strength and an apparent taste for human flesh, classified as beasts rather than beings thanks to their low IQ. That was the book example of it. But unfortunately, the book never explains how to kill one. The said beast spotted both Hermione and Orion and roared. But Orion has to say that Hermione was a better screamer. No that didn't come out right. I mean she is loud, Orion understood what he thought and muttered, but his mind was already going to that line of thoughts. Before he could further justify his words inside his mind, Hermione grabbed him by the collar and dragged him inside the toilet with her. Girl, your actions are not helping my imagination at all, Orion would have complained if there was not a F-King troll outside. Boom, troll swings his weapon and destroys all the toilets in line. Orion was quick with his reflexes, after grabbing Hermione he immediately squatted down. Making sure to protect Hermione. He had Hermione in his arms while lying on the washroom floor. We need to get out of here, he said and Hermione who was dazed by what just happened nodded after coming out of her stunned state. Troll swung his weapon again but this time he didn't complete the attack. Orion notices that both Rose and Ron throwing rocks and broken wooden planks at Troll. Orion noticing that Troll's attention is shifted, looked at Hermione. After checking that she was fine he got ready. So you are finally using it, Merlin asked. Yeah, I need some time to prepare my attack. This will help, Orion said and took out a piece of wood from his pocket. But this was not just any piece of wood. There was runes inscribed on it. Orion made this on his own after learning runes from Merlin and getting his ass kicked by Malfoy, in the hope that he can use this against him. Of course, he never made this harmful but it will blind the opponent and stink when thrown towards them. Orion also did the same. When the time was right he threw the makeshift stun grenade toward the raging troll. Take this you Hulk wannabe, Orion shouted. And just like he anticipated, 
the moment the magical grenade touched Troll after Orion infused his magic on the runes. It blasts and the sounds almost render the troll useless. Well almost? He made the grenade for small kids after all. While others were stunned at how suddenly Orion was able to stop the troll. They didn't notice the troll becoming a little more violent. He swung his weapon, all around the bathroom. Everyone coming out of there surprised and quickly retreated but Orion couldn't. Being the closest to the troll, he just didn't have enough time to react. But he was still faster than any kid or even adult. He was able to dodge the wooden weapon by ducking. But then got hit by the backhand of the troll. It was not an attack but rather a troll just lashing out. But Orion was still sent back by a couple of feet. Orion, came the shout of two girls and one boy who were trying to stop the troll. That f***ing hurts, Orion gritted his teeth. Quick, you have some time before troll comes back to his senses, Merlin said on the sideline. Orion nodded and again took out his wand. But he was holding it in a reverse grip. Here goes nothing, Orion mutters. Dash. Flashback. It was after the first time he got attacked by Malfoy and other kids. Now listen, I know that you are going to make a weapon with runes, but those are not gonna work against a powerful being. And currently, I have no safe way to increase your power drastically. But I do have an idea, Merlin said with a smile on his face. After Orion bitch a lot about being weak, Merlin finally comes up with an idea. What? Orion asked eagerly. You see, in my days, magicals were not unknown to the moles, and thanks to this many conflicts used to happen. As it stands, without modern technology, the moles were at a constant disadvantage against the magicals. But then they find a way, they convert the moles into half magical with sacrificial magic. They sacrifice our kind to gain a little bit of magic, Merlin said with a sigh. Orion on the other hand didn't understand how this history lesson was supposed to make him stronger but he listened nonetheless. The amount of magic they got even after sacrificing our kind and infusing their blood with the blood of the sacrificial witch or wizards, was very weak. Actually, this magically infused mulls might have just as much magic as you have right now. Orion at this got a little interested. He listens with rapt attention then. Even after sacrificing many of our brethren, mulls were not as strong as a witch or a wizard, so they again find a way, like mulls usually do. They enchanted their swords with the mere amount of magic they had making the swords and other weapons in their possession a magical conductor, something which can touch magic. Steel was a no-go but silver was a good conductor and thus they made silver swords. And this worked. They were able to deflect magic with their swords and even break magical barriers with those swords, Merlin said and let what he said sink in. Orion after thinking a bit blinked and then finally said, So, you want me to enchant a sword and carry that around the castle? Orion asked with irritation. Of course, he can use a dagger as well but still, carry a weapon like that around the castle. He doesn't wanna. If someone finds out then he is screwed. Of course not, you don't need metal. You have something better with you, Merlin said and Ryan raised his eyes. Flashback end. Dash. Orion was holding his wand in a reverse grip, channeling magic through the wand, hardening the wand itself and making sure that the tip of the wand is getting sharper while not wasting any bit of magic in the process. Orion are you okay? Hermione who was close to Orion came to him while Rose and Ron were distracting the troll. Get out of here, that bastard is all mine, Orion said, not even looking at Hermione. This was his time to shine. He was training in his technique for a long time. He is able to convert his wand into a magic dagger. Normal daggers or swords can't deflect magic or pierce into the hide of these magical beasts. But if he pulls this off then he can damage the troll. Hermione was taken aback by the smile on Orion's face. She didn't understand what Orion meant. Hey, you bastard. Here, come here, Orion got up from his position and shouted, attracting the troll towards himself. He was ready, his wand was already glowing with a faint light, indicating that magic was flowing through the wand. Troll turned round and swung his wooden weapons towards Orion. Hermione already backed down after seeing Orion directly challenging the troll. Idiot what are you doing? A girl said. It was either Rose or Hermione but Orion couldn't say. His whole focus was on the troll right now. Orion easily dodged the swing and rushed towards the troll with a smile on his face. Help him, Hermione shouted to Rose and Ron. How? Huh? Ron asked. Rose too was looking around to find an object to throw. None of them knew an offensive spell and this was not a book or a movie where Ron could just levitate trolls' weapons out of his hand. Trolls have incredible strength. It is not possible for a student to be able to snatch a weapon from a troll's hand. 
Orion after dodging the attack, rushed towards the troll but there was a problem. To really kill the troll, he has to attack his head. But the height problem is just a little too much. Orion gulped and thought of something. He then rushes towards troll with all his speed. He already saw an attack coming his way but he was already on the flow. Active integration was making him strong on the spot. Increasing his stats. He slid on the floor, avoiding the attack and passing through between Troll's legs. Come here, I am here, Orion shouted and the Troll followed. He attracted the Troll towards the wall of the bathroom, making sure that he has enough space for maneuver and run to get some speed. And there we go, Orion smirks, taking out another magical stun grenade he threw it towards the Troll. Troll being the idiot he was, just stood there and didn't move all at all, getting stunned once again. It's now or never, Merlin said from the sideline. Yeah, Orion just grunted and breathed hard. His integration once again boosted his stats. There was a visible difference in his looks now. His eyes which usually are blue, now were now had a hint of golden mix on them. There was vein popping on his forehead. He almost felt like Zenistsu from Demon Slayer. Getting ready to flash. His magic made his hair float up a little, while there was a visible cold breath effect when he let out his breath. And to some extent, he did just that. He leapt with insane speed, going directly towards where the troll was standing. He would have sworn that he was hearing Doom's music. Now that bard us. With a leap, he planted his one leg on the troll's leg like he was a wall while still going up and planting his second leg on his stomach. Then he jumps from there, aiming for the wall with his both legs. Getting even higher. In an instant, he was already near troll's head. One more leap. He thought to himself and after planting his foot on the wall, he with all his might jumped once again towards the troll. This time successfully reaching the head and beyond. His wand by now was oozing with his magic, like a sharp dagger on his hand. He held the wand just like a dagger with both hands with a reverse grip and shouted while falling towards troll's head, ready to pierce him. Surprised mother Efk, 